still watching, Vincent Day 2, your virtual, virtual inset training for teachers 2021. I am your tender loving host, Ma'am Carla. And this is Sir Avigil. Nagpabalik muli para sa isa pang hapon na masaya at exciting na mga topics para po sa ating mga kaguruan. Pero bagong lahat, let's watch these videos tungkol po sa ating DepEd Computerization Program and PD Elements. Late in 2018, DepEd officials went to the United States to visit some of the department's international partners. This was to establish the implementation of various programs and to facilitate future partnerships. The DepEd team attended the Oracle Open World 2018 and saw the projects of senior high school students of Oracle's Design Tech High School at the exhibit. The students were part of the elective exploration program which consists of four two-week intercessions every school year on top of the regular curriculum. DepEd has asked Oracle to bring the same program to the Philippines in the future. So it's called the Communicator and it's basically a chatbot that helps you optimize your daily commute by communicating your plans to people without you having to do anything. With the promise of the fourth industrial revolution, the Department of Education is adopting a new policy direction in transforming the Philippine education system. It is building a strong foundational framework and is fully supporting educational technology. This is the beginning of the public schools of the future's digital rise. Ang digital rise natin supports that particular aspect ng ating K-12 curriculum na binibigyan natin ng devices that are needed in order to deliver those uh, digital literacy skills sa ating mga bata. Then, secondly, ang ating digital rise, sinusupport niya yung, again, part ng K-12 curriculum kasi requires na yung ating mga teachers will be using ICT to strengthen their uh, yung pedagogical skills nila. No? So, part ng digital rise will be putting in yung mga computers and devices para sa ating teachers. So, that will include one laptop and a television or a digital board dun sa bawat classroom ng ating mga schools. And finally, uh, ang isang aspect din sa curriculum is uh, it requires na magkaroon ng access yung mga bata natin sa mga e-learning uh, resources. So, um, marami na tayong na-collect na mga digital resources from Khan Academy, from Wikipedia online, offline, and so on. Uh, around 300 gigabytes worth na of resources ang na-collect natin along with yung LR portal natin. And meron pang parating, uh, as soon as masahin yung MOA with DOST, uh, meron pang Starbucks na around, again, around another 300 gigabytes worth of uh, learning resources. Another goal is to create in every public science high school an innovation hub where the latest available emerging technologies are provided for the use and manipulation of learners having ICT as an elective. The hub houses 3D printing technology, makerspace, robotics engineering and simulation, mechatronics facilities and drone technology among others. Well, this actually helped a lot, especially when children are exposed to the technology. I know some kids around, they also started doing robotics way before than I did. And I was surprised that well, all the ideas they had, and they were able to do so, mainly using the Lego Minds Robotics. And I just wondered if they can make it in that uh, young of age. I wonder what will happen if they would go on and keep on learning about it. These innovations will not be limited to just a few schools. All public school learners are envisioned to have tablets or laptops or access to them. The transformative learning in using these educational devices enhances the 21st century skills of learners and bridges the digital divide, most especially in the last mile schools who are not exempt from the digital rise. With the digital rise, learners are encouraged to use their creativity and technology to make a difference in the world. DepEd's digital rise will be made possible through the continued efforts of the administration in partnership with international industry players, 
to deliver quality and future-ready resources for the benefit of learners, teachers, and administrators, as well as the entire DepEd community. The digital rise in Philippine public education has begun. DepEd provides the best future for our learners by creating changes that mark the milestones of educational reform to teach minds, touch hearts, and transform lives. Welcome to the start of Philippine Education's Digital Rise. Hi, teachers and learners! Good day! I am Mr. Alvin C., one of the EdTech specialists serving you with happiness. In response to the United Nations Declaration of Paris in 2012 about the open educational resources, the Philippines' basic education is ready to fulfill its promise to make learning accessible and give equal opportunity to every Filipino. This is the birth of the DepEd Commons to bridge the gaps of having adequate available resources with the aid of ICT equipment and infrastructure. The DepEd Commons was a flagship project headed by the Undersecretary for Administration, Alain Del B. Pasqua, and Director 4 of the Information and Communication Technology Service, Abram Y.C. Abanil. DepEd Commons serves as an online education delivery platform of the department where learning resources, online review materials, and open educational resources, or OERs, made by educators are available, easily accessed, and where resources can be modified without having to reprint when such materials necessitate revisions or improvement. In cooperation with the Department of Information and Communication Technology, or DICT, National Telecommunication Commissions, or NTC, SMART, PLDT, and GLOBE, we can use the DepEd Commons for free even without the data load or credits. It's more convenient to learn and study 24-7 in the comfort of your own home. The interface of the system is simple and yet very direct to immediately show the needed materials, which can be downloaded or viewed via a browser. Continuous enhancement and development were catered to showcase the abrupt needs of the end users. With the demands of technology in education, the DepEd Commons became top 4 as the most trending search in Google in year 2020. Aside from that, DepEd Commons ranked number 1 in the most searched topic under the education category in our country in the same year. The DepEd Commons has a total number of 15,190,182 unique users since it was first launched in March 2020. Today, you will see thousands of learning resources in the system to support the blended learning modalities of the department. In addition, the bright future of Deaf and Commons will continuously shine as we embark and empower the public school teachers in creating world-class teaching and learning resources such as electronic books or ebooks, digital magazine and worksheets, interactive online games, self-developed Android applications, instructional and tutorial video contents, and other emerging technology tools. As a support system in the online modalities, the use of learning management system is taking into shape. The DepEd LMS is an e-learning platform initiated by the ICTS to help and support the teaching and learning process in the controlled online environment. It was created to work concertedly with the DepEd Commons. Amongst the advantages of using the DepEd LMS are as follows. First, it is cost-effective. The courseware allows participants to access it in their own free time and reduces travel expenses, accommodation costs, and professional fees. Learning while watching the instructional aided materials enhances the soft skills of participants by doing the hands-on activity as requirement. 
In addition, a digital certificate with QR security code is automatically rewarded to a participant once a certain course is accomplished and completed. Second, consistency of training. The delivery and mastery of competencies is consistent since it is centralized, well-organized, and easy to navigate. It delivers a learning curve to all students by supplying a single source for content, course materials, and instruction with variation of activities that will enhance the skills of end users. Third, it easily tracks learners' progress and performance. It has the capability to allow DepEd to easily generate and consolidate training reports in all overall perspective. By utilizing the e-learning courses or online trainings, trainers can easily track goals progress, knowledge gains, and determine who have completed the course or who needs assistance and help. The Department of Education internally developed an in-house learning management system, namely the Professional Development LMS or PDLMS, used for professional growth and capacity building for teacher and non-teaching personnel, which is not limited to public school teachers. It is also available to private school teachers and even college or university professors. On the other hand, the DepEd Regional LMS or DLMS is intended exclusively for public school teachers and students within their regions and divisions to support the blended learning modalities in delivering quality instruction. To learn more and have a field of ease in using this innovative system, kindly visit Commons that deped.gov.ph for depth and commons. Trainings that deped.gov.ph for depth and PD LMS. And LMS that deped.gov.ph for depth and regional LMS. We will continue to innovate and transform the Philippine basic education in its target glory. Para sa bata, para sa bayan. Para sa guru, solong idokalidad. And welcome sa ating afternoon session ng Vincent 2 Day 2. Kumusta po kayo mga teachers? Nagusog ba kayo? Ika sir, nagusog ka ba? Siyempre, definitely. Dahil busog na busog ako dahil marami tayong natutunan simula kahapon ng ating Vincent 2 ng ating Vincent 2. <laughs> Ikaw, Teacher Carla. Siyempre, nabusig rin ako kasi ang dami nating na, natutunan, ang dami nating bakal kanina sa ating morning session, yes. right? We have a uh, topic about, we have topics about radio-based instructions. We also have uh, about child-friendly approaches for para-teachers. And we also have techniques and delivery style for virtual classes. And Siyempre naman, di ba? Sobrang talagang helpful itong mga topics na ito para sa ating mga teachers. Totoo, totoo. At alam ko ang bawat guru na nanonood ngayon ay meron ng baon na ipanlalaban sa dating na pasukan. At alam mo, kwentong FB tayo, teacher. Kasi nakita ko yung mga post ng ating mga kasamahan, meron talagang nag-face-to-face -face, but observing uh, uh, social distancing. Talagang may set up pa ng kanila virtual inset 2021. Kaya nakakatuwa, no? talagang mga siniseryoso din nila ito. Kasi alam nila, na ito ay para sa kanila. Hindi lang para sa mga buko, para sa bata, para, para sa, sa bayan. bayan. Sulong edukalidad! Kaya alam mo, Teacher Carla, bukod dyan sa nakaka-excite niya, na-excite na rin ako. Alam mo kasi habang pinapanood kita in your red dress, bukod ka sa naalala ko si Danny Girl, naalala ko na malapit na ang Pasko. Ano ba? Sample nga, Teacher, na ano isang Christmas song para sa kanila kasi bukas, September 1 na. So, Para po sa inyo, isang awiting handog ni Teacher Carla, pamasko. Sa pasko, darating. <laughs> <laughs> yan, pasampol pa lang yan. Excited na tayo sa darating na pasko. 116 days before Christmas. Ayan. And now, happy happy good vibes na lang. Shout out po muna tayo sa ating mga teachers. Medyo nabitin tayo kanina. Pero ito na, binabati po natin SDO Kaloka with their PSDS. 
Dr. Archie Azucenas and Dr. Jovan Cornelia. Pinabati ko kina mga beshes ko from Magdala Santos Memorial National High School. We have Michelle Alcuete, Ma'am Rose Antigonia, Ma'am Abigail Obayas, Ma'am Fredix Villano, and Ma'am Lizelle Valdivia. Hello to Press Corazon Aquino Elementary School from Mrs. Deldilene Cruz. Hello also to uh, Prenza National High School from Sir Marco Victoriano. Hello to Big PhD ng Bagong Pag-asa Elementary School, Irina Susyon of Brian and Brian Pato at lahat ng faculty at staff of One Sumulo High School and Carlos P. Garcia High School. Greetings from Ma'am Ruby Rosa Buwan. Hello, hello din kay Dr. Ophelia Y. Nabti ng Bagong Silang Elementary School. Greetings from Ma'am Maylene Uy. From Ma'am Lizelle de Vega, hello po sa Katanawan Central School of Quezon. Mm -hmm. Meron din tayo greetings ng Tropang L, Tropang... Runic, Tropang Clinic. Tropang Clinic. Um, <laughs> Avengers of Santa Lucia National High School with their principal, Dr. or Mr. Roberto Lagana. And hello po, kay Sir Eduardo Lugto of SDO Calocan from Ma'am Mary Ann Ablihan. At binabati din po natin ang faculty and staff from Gapok National High School, SDO Sultan Kodana. TLE teachers from General Emilio Aguinaldo National High School, SDO Imo City. Hello to Ma'am Principal Lerma V. Peña. Binabati ko rin ang Applied National High School, Maine, sa uh, SDO Santa Rosa City, Dr. Edwina P. Talavera from Mavic, Montaño. Love you po, Dakan Love, Gregorio National High School, Principal Donato Magbu from Ed Balabagon Elementary School, SDO Albay, Manito District, with our head teacher Aleja Beliano, Bawake National High School, Mabalakat City, from Edson, Mayrina. Pinabati ko rin ang pinakagwapong si Sir Cyril Locanias from SDO Santa Rosa City. Hello po sa Bagong Buhay Elementary School, Silang Cavite at ang aking minamahal na auntie, Teacher Edita Villamor. At kay Ma'am Jean Laureta from SDO Navotas, Ma'am Marisol Banyaga, Ma'am Maria Francia Velasco ng TED-Ed Naga. Hello, hello din kay PSDS Mr. Luis M. Germina and Principal Mrs. Sharina P. S. Rasco and all the teachers of Santissima Cruz Elementary School and to all the principals and teachers of Santa Cruz District, Laguna. Pinabati din po natin ang MAPE Sports Group ng SDO Navotas. Happy birthday, Sir Rafi Lanza. At ang teaching and non-teaching personal ng SDO Angeles with our SDS Dr. Maria Irene. Tamayo and ASDS Dr. Fernandina Ochenko. Narin din po ang Northville Integrated School, Sir Anel T. Perez. Hello din po sa Marawa National High School, John North, headed by Ma'am Lorna May Datui. Mm -hmm. And hello din sa Potrero National High School, kay Dr. Olivia Q. Martin at sa lahat ng mga teachers. Yan ay pagbatis dahil sa ating teacher broadcaster na si Ma'am Tawi. Hello din po sa General Vito Belarmino Integrated National High School. Magbuhay ang mga genera. At shoutout din po sa ating NCR Volleyball Elementary Group. Ang mga kasama ko po dyan, Ma'am Susan Bula, Ma'am Irma Gregorio, Ma'am Sarita Mercado, Ma'am Jacqueline, uh, uh, Sir Kenneth Fernandez, Sir Ray Pagilagan, and Sir June Lucas at Ma'am Lian Mariana. Hello po. Hello din kay uh, Ma'am Evangeline Limbo na tayo sa Federal National High School. Yan ay pagbati galing kay uh, Marine, Maraniel Nofuente o Maya. Kaway-kaway po sa ating Deped TV Owls, Sir Dominic Ocampo of SDO Oriental Mindoro Owls, team teacher ng Ligmana North District and Peter Mauro Del Valle of Bulabot Elementary School, Lagunoy South, SDO Kamsur. Sabi ko niya, tama? Yes! At pagbati po sa Kulang Masle National High School at sa lahat ng nanonood sa SDO Pampanga. Yan po ay pagbati mula sa ating teacher broadcaster na Celine Espot. Hello po sa Pedro Acheron, Senior Elementary, Central Elementary School, Jensen City. Kamusta po kayo dyan? At sa Pula Elementary School, Canlaod City, Negros Oriental. Meron din tayong pagbati from Sir DJ Santiago, ang bagong principal ng um, MBA SD. HS na si Ma'am Connie Gutierrez. Hello po sa inyo at sa magandang English Department Head niya na si Ma'am Mayet Alcazar. Shout out sa magandang masipag na English Department Head, Ma'am Irene Olano of Bagong Barrio National High School under the supervision of Sir Bong Danug, ang kanilang competent and efficient principal from Sir Richard Papia. Hello, hello din sa mga teachers na nanonood from the Payong High School, SDO Pasig. Uh, 
especially to Danny Capovida, Nelor Forte Jr., and Mary Ann Alonso. At yan po ang ating mga naunang pagbati. Mami ako na ito. Shoutout natin mga minamahal na all over the Philippines. At bago yan, teachers, nag-aantabay po kami sa mga kwentong Vincent 2.0 inyo. Kaya narito ang Lourdes de la Desma del Prado Memorial National High School ng Region 7 Central Visayas Division of Tanhai City. Let's watch the next. Visayas, thank you so much po sa pag-antabay din sa ating Vincent 2.0. Love you po. At ngayon, dahil love din natin, hindi lang sila, love po natin ang lahat ng mga guro narito. Alam nyo, naging maingay ito simula nung nakarataon dahil pinaghahandaan natin, dear teachers, na kayo ay hindi po namin malimutan. Nihanda po natin ang tinatawag na TV-based instruction. At kilalang kilalal po ninyo ang DepEd TV. Teacher Carla, ano pa kagandahan nito para sa kanila? Siyempre, maganda ito para sa teachers natin kasi matutulungan nito yung mga estudyante nila sa pag, uh, pag-aaral. Totoo right? kasi, through video lessons, no? Yes, exactly. We prepared everything na masaya, light, at matututunan ng sigurado ng inyong mga mag-aaral ang bawat lessons aligned sa pinatawag nating meals. At para ipakilala na sa atin ang TV-based instruction for effective utilization and plotting, to your weekly lesson delivery, dear teachers, Narito, he is a proud product of the public education system in the Philippines. He had an impressive educational qualification, earning his secondary course in the School of the Geniuses, the city of Mandaluyong Science High School, and received to college in the globally acclaimed National Center for Teacher Education, which is the Philippine Normal University earning the degree of Bachelor of Elementary Education with specialization in women's studies. Wow. Sir Salvador previously worked as an elementary classroom advisor and an elementary school teacher at Ambado T. Reyes Elementary School, who was involved in a variety of research and studies, such as improving the academic performance of grade 5 pupils of Ambado T. Reyes Elementary School through Project Dream, status of gender-responsive curriculum, basis for institutionalization, Institutionalization of Gender and Development in K-12 program and currently he is taking up Masters of Arts in Education in Curriculum and Instruction with completed academic requirements at the Philippine Normal University, Manila. And as an educator, he received the following recognitions. 
We have here the DepEd Digital Riser Certified Champion in October 2019. He is also awarded as the most outstanding elementary educator of SDO Mandaluyong and proponent in establishing the open educational resources, which aims at establishing an offline e-library for all SDO Mandaluyong libraries. And he is also a member of Asia Pacific Research Association on Curriculum Studies Incorporated, Curriculum Studies Association of the Philippines Incorporated. These memberships in different curricular organizations hone his skills as curriculum and test writer in mathematics and the former member of SDO Mandaluyo Quality Assurance Team. He was a division level demonstration teacher during the enhancement of K-12 program using best pedagogical practices in different key stages in January 2019. He was an international demonstration teacher during the first international conference and workshop on technology and strategic classroom and research innovations in October 2018. And a teacher. Mm -hmm. He was also the original lecturer, resource speaker in MTAP convention and the MTAP de dependency or Seminar workshop for elementary teachers. Grabe ang dami, no? Tama. At hindi lang yan. He also received international certification from Google, namely Google Certified Educator Level 1 and 2. He is also a Microsoft Education Ambassador and Microsoft Certified Educator. These experiences in the academy have widened his perspective and so when he joined in 2020 as an edtech specialist, of the Information and Community uh, Communications Technology Service Educational Technical Technology Unit to the Open Educational Resources. And currently, he is the project lead of DepEd TV. Yes, kilala kilala natin yan. Indeed, he can be considered as one who exists the culture of excellence and competitiveness with an inward flair of a brilliant mind. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Sir Salvador E. Manansala the first. Um, hello, good afternoon to our viewers all over the country and our uh, uh, viewers around the world. So again, my name is Mr. Salvador Manansala the first, and I'm here to discuss to you about important topics on TV-based instruction. TV-based instruction, effective utilization and plotting to weekly lesson delivery. On this particular session, I'll be discussing to you concepts and important things about establishing a TV-based instruction. Another one, I'm going to show you a recent survey uh, about student satisfaction on Dep and TV. On the third, uh, our third uh, discussion for this uh, session is about how are we going to integrate Dep and TV lessons into our day-to-day -day teaching and learning process, and hopefully. Uh, our last uh, uh, last uh, guest will discuss to us about his experience on integrating TV lessons in in his uh, mathematics class. So again, let's start this discussion. In 2020, as the COVID pandemic spread across the globe, a majority of countries announced the temporary closure of schools impacting more than 91% of students worldwide. So this is the sad reality na naging epekto ng COVID-19 to all of us. Talagang around the world, unti-unti, nagkakaroon ng school closure, face-to-face -face interaction is not possible. And because of this, the Department of Education initiated different uh, distance learning delivery modalities that will enable our students to continue their education. And in DepEd, we are trying to provide you with all the things that you need and to empower you with to empower you when it comes to delivering quality education to our learners. By April 2020, close to 1.6 billion children and youth were, were out of school. So this is uh, again the effect of COVID-19 because of this. Some of the some of our students were not able to enroll because of fear of contracting COVID-19. COVID so, and access to quality education is stipulated in the United Nations United Nation Sustainable Development Goals that by 2030, 
We need to ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable, and primary and secondary education leading to relevant and goal four of effective learning outcomes. So in everything that we do, especially providing quality education to our learners, we are bound to follow this UN Sustainable Development Goals na wherein we are members, we are Philippine is a member, Philippines is a member of United Nations. And recently, uh, the Department of Education launched this mantra of Sulong Edukalidad. In the Philippines, the provision of access to quality basic education continues to be a key priority of the Department of Education. This is highlighted in the DepEd Trust Sulong Edukalidad which seeks to close access gaps while recalibrating the department's energies towards improving the quality dimensions of the national educational system. So with this uh, Sulok Edukalidad Mantra, DEPED was able to launch different programs that will address gaps in the educational system that will help our teachers in delivering quality instruction via different learning modalities and most especially the main uh, the main goal of the DepEd is to prepare our youth and our learners in the future. And as part of the DepEd's plan in delivering quality education, we have this basic education learning continuity plan. It was developed to provide guidance to the department on how to deliver education in this time of crisis while ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all learners, teachers, and personnel of DepEd. So this BLCP, it is initiated by the Department of Education Central Office and adopted by different regional offices and division offices around the country. With all of this BLCP, the main goal is to provide quality education and for education to continue amidst pandemic. And recently, we have this uh, memorandum on the suggested strategies in implementing distance learning, distance learning delivery modalities for school year 2020-2021. It was released last July 21, 2020. And this memorandum covers descriptions and considerations for each distance learning modalities or the distance learning delivery modalities, the map of learning resources for each DLDM and proposed actions to address potential challenges in implementing DLDM, the matrix of requirements of the DLDM is enclosed. So later on, we'll be discussing this uh, matrix but uh, all of us will be aware about this uh, distance learning delivery modalities. And Distance learning may be implemented through the following. We are all aware of this. Modular distance learning, we have the digital modular distance learning. We also have the printed modular distance learning. Another one is online distance learning. And the third one is TV video, TV video and radio-based instruction, or the first one is a TV video, SLM-based, TV video, MEX-based, and radio-based instruction, RBI, which is under the blended distance learning modality. For this session, we will focus more on the TV video MELX base because in Depend TV, we were able to we were able to produce uh, TV lessons anchored uh, with our most essential learning competencies. So before we proceed with our next uh, discussion, let us watch the short video about the infomercial of Depend TV. Maraming paraan para matuto sa kabila ng maraming pagbabago. Oops! Oo! Kami nga! Ang inyong mga teachers sa telebisyon, mas madalas nyo nang mapanonood at makakasama. Mas mahabang oras at maraming araw. Lunes hanggang Sabado mula alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi. Dahil sa DepEd TV, Magagawa nating ipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral kahit wala tayo sa loob ng paaralan. Manood lang sa inyong telebisyon o buksan ang inyong mga laptops, 
tablet o cellphone para mapanood ang mga video lessons na nagmula sa most essential learning competencies na ginagamit rin sa lahat ng paaralan sa buong bansa. Tumutok sa ating mga lesson mula kinder, elementary, junior high school, senior high school at ALS na naka-video episodes na. Lipat na sa IBC 13, GMA Affordabox Channel 7 at Solar Learning Channel. Kung hindi makahabol sa live broadcast, aba naman! Subscribe na sa official YouTube channel ng DepEd TV at bisitahin ang DepEd Commons, DepEd TV official Google site para makapanood ng mga video episodes sa inyong mga cellphones, tablets, laptops o personal computers. Learning is a continuous process and the Department of Education will continue to innovate teaching to make learning accessible to every Filipino. Kaya naman mapapanood mo na rin ang bawat video lesson na mayroon ng Filipino Sign Language at may salin sa iba't ibang dialekto. Ito ay dahil gusto namin na lubos na maunawaan ng lahat ang bawat aralin. Tunay nga na hindi tumitigil ang kagawaran ng edukasyon sa pagbibigay ng mga dekalidad na video lessons, kaya naman nakatanggap tayo ng iba't ibang pagkilala mula sa Mobiles for Education Alliance bilang EdTech Policymaker Champion. Honorable mention under the Crisis and Conflict Response category at Grand Prize for Outstanding Thematic Presentation mula sa Cygnus Asia TV Conference. Kaya para sa mga pag-asa ng ating bayan, ipagpatuloy natin ang pagtataguyod sa pagtatuto ng bawat kabataang Pilipino. Ang komunidad at mga magulang ang kaagapay at ang DepEd TV ay gabay at tulay para sa edukasyong kailanman ay di tatamlay. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Kunin na ang self-learning modules, papel at panulat, ballpen man o lapis yan. Dahil sama-sama tayong matututo, habang nag-e-enjoy. Para sa bata, para sa guro, para sa bayan. Sulo, edukalidad! At ito ang DepEd TV. Ayan, so thank you to our teacher broadcasters for uh, allowing us uh, na ishoot yung ating infomercial about DepEd TV. So we're going to discuss the basics of DepEd TV or the TV-based instruction. Ideally, the television is meant to, the first thing is to educate. We are using television to educate the young, to educate our learners. Another one is to inform them about the things that they need to know about the current events that is happening around us. Third is to entertain them. And lastly, to inspire our learners to do more and to bring out the best of their abilities. The vision of the TV-based instruction is to create a sustainable training program that will be vital tool during pandemics and disasters where education cannot stop. A program that upholds the Department of Education's core values. Makajos, God-centered and God-fearing. Makabansa, patriotic, makatao, compassion for humanity, and makakalikasan, love or protector of nature. All the TV episodes of DepEd TV, Dep TV are anchored on this uh, DepEd core values, which is being makajos, makabansa, makatao, and makakalikasan. The goals is balance the distribution of quality education among areas in both urban and geographically isolated and disconnected communities. Provide quality teaching and learning delivery by using television as a means to support and complement other learning delivery modalities and integrate core values and other government initiatives that support and protect children's interest in pursuit of liberating education. In the Department of Education, we have this, the Digital Rice Program. Under the Digital Rice Program, we have the Last Mile School Program. Pag sinabi natin Last Mile School, ito po yung mga skwelahan na belong dun sa mga hindi kayang abutin ng anumang uri ng transportation. Uh, ang pwede lang makarating doon siguro yung mga single, pero yung mga uh, four wheels hindi pwedeng makapunta. 
dahil nga nasa malayo sila, nasa secluded area sila, most of the time walang internet signal. At meron lang sila and radio. And to connect the disconnected schools and the disconnected learners. In the Department of Education, we've been doing a lot of things, especially reaching out the last mile schools. We have programs for OER. We also have programs on DepEd TV and uh, for this year, the radio-based instruction. Hopefully, all of this will help us, will help our teachers, will help our learners na makapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral. And in everything that we do, lagi nang iniisip yung kapakanan ng ating mga mag-aaral at ng ating mga guro. The teachers and parents or learning facilitators are expected to first, they improve pedagogical confidence using television as a tool in delivering instruction and maximize opportunities for professional growth and development using telecourse for teachers. Who are the expected viewers for this TV-based instruction? First, we have the K-12 learners, our alternative learning system learners, we also have our students with special uh, students with special educational needs, teachers and other non-teaching personnel, educational leaders, parents, household partners, and learning facilitators. These are the expected viewers for DepEd TV and the Dep and TV-based instruction. For the methodology, we are based on curriculum content. Lessons presented in the television broadcast are aligned to the most essential learning competencies. During the quality assurance process, our QA evaluators uh, are very particular with the alignment of the script to the learning competencies na nasa most essential learning competencies. Kasi nga po, the goal is to cover all the competencies in the MELCs so that our teachers will have Another supplementary materials para makatulong sa kanila na ma-deliver yung quality education to our learners. These are suggested uh, number of minutes per key stages. As we all know, our we are divided into four key stages. For key stage 1, kindergarten to grade 3, 60 minutes. Key stage 2, grades 4 to 6, 50 minutes. Key stage 3, grade 7 to 10, 40 minutes. Key stage 4, senior high school, 40 minutes. And alternative learning system, 40 minutes. Let us try to understand the time allocation per key stage. There are considerations na, there are considerations bago natin nilagay yung mga yun, yung parang tinatawag natin na uh, prescribed number of minutes. The first one is the number of minutes per key stage complies with the allowable screen time of learners recommended by the World Health Organization while maintaining the recommended number of engagement per key stage defined in DepEd Order Number 21, Series of 2019, as possible. If you're going to observe, more airtime is proposed for key stage 1, which is kindergarten to grade 3, in as much as they will still need additional guidance from their parents to process the episodes for them. Later on, I'll be showing you a simple study or a simple survey about student satisfaction for deaf and TV. The study reveals sino ba talaga yung nakakasama ng mga learners natin. Why are we going to present this study? Because in deaf and TV, in everything that we do, it should be uh, evidence-based and data-driven. The data that we have shows na talagang marami, talagang ang daming nanonood at patuloy na nanonood ng DepEd TV. Less airtime is proposed as the key stage progresses where learners are more independent and self-paced. So papansin ninyo, no, kanina we have discussions about para teachers and yung mga ibang mga learning, mga home facilitators natin na talagang we are trying to empower them kasi nga Isa sa mga magandang naidulot ng pandemic na ito is we develop yung, uh, yung relationship. Mas pinagting natin yung teacher-parent relationship dahil 
Siyempre, hindi na natin nahahawakan sa loob ng classroom yung mga learners natin. And talaga naging dependent tayo minsan sa mga parents and mga ho, uh, learning home partners ng ating mga uh, students. The delivery of each episode will follow the prescribed minimum format. So this is our prescribed minimum format for our uh, DepEd TV uh, episodes. Introduction and pre-assessment the lesson proper, the synthesis and generalization, appreciation and post-assessment, agreement and assignment. So this is the time allotment for key stages. We're going to observe from K to 3, we have more time. And as the level progresses, mas bumababa ng bumababa yung number of minutes na allocated for them. This is the map of the learning resources needed for each subcategory of distance learning delivery, delivery modalities. So I'll focus more on the RBI and the, 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 the TV and video RBI. For TV and video, SLM-based SLM -based video and activity sheets. TV video melts map, melts aligned videos and activity sheets. And for RBI, SLM-based RBI and activity sheets. If you're going to observe, Lahat ng episodes natin is anchored doon sa ating mga tinatawag na activity sheets na SLM-based and MELCS-based. Lagi siyang may kakibat na activity sheets kasi the activity sheets will determine kung ano ba talaga yung naging learning ng ating mga learners. And while all subcategories of DLDM are appropriate for all, for all grade levels when managed by a teaching a teacher and learning facilitator, those in green colors are the priority grades to do the specific uh, distance learning delivery modalities in cases where resources are limited. So looking at the interpretation of this of this particular video, we can assure we can assure na para bang talagang for TV based instruction, mas ano siya, mas appropriate siya dun sa key stage one, which is kindergarten to grade three. For the video cycle, this is the proposed video production cycle for us. CO consolidates the video episodes, then ROs distribute melts to DOs, and DOs distribute melts to schools, and then ayan, ito yung ano, pero ang nangyari ngayon, we at the Department of Education, especially under the strand of Yusek Alangel B. Pasqua, Office of the Under Secretary for Administration, in partnership with Curriculum and Instruction Strand under the leadership of... Uh, Yusek, uh, Justado, M. San Antonio, talagang nagkaroon ng partnership to produce this Step and TV episodes. And for student satisfaction survey on Step and TV, so this particular study will, will, will help us to understand ano ba talaga yung mga nagawa na. Yung, ano ba yung study? Ano ba yung sinasabi ng ating mga stakeholders about this about this uh, so-called uh, DepEd TV. But before this, let's watch the short video about production of TV episodes. analyze the baseline of uh, the reads of radio this is 85 percent free tv 88 percent digital cable and satellite tv that is 47 percent and internet 63 percent you would see that uh, if you use tv and radio you would already reach 100 percent of the entire population this is the conclusion arrived at by Tantar, even though free TV is 88% and even though radio is 85%, when you combine the two, you reach 100% of the population. See, we have to start 
with ourselves. There is life beyond modules. There is education beyond face to face. There is death at radio. There is death at TV. Kami ay nagpapasalamat at nagpupugay sa inyong katapatan, sa inyong tungkulin bilang mga guro. Kami, kasama ng buong kagawaran, ay nakikiisa sa pagpapatuloy ng edukasyon kahit na sa gitna ng pandemyang ito. Sa mga minamahal namin mga teacher broadcasters, saludong saludo po kami sa inyong lahat. Malaking pasasalamat po, laban lang mga teacher broadcasters. Alright! Haharap ako sa kamera upang magturo. Um, let's discuss this uh, student satisfaction survey on DEP and DB. The purpose of the study is to determine the effectiveness of learning through the use of television as a modality. The respondents responded to a series of questions via an online survey conducted in Google Forms that focused on how they use television and the internet to supplement the learning process that they normally do in the classroom. The interaction between the television lesson and the most important learning competencies, most essential learning competencies established by the DepEd is very clear. The presenter of the lesson, known as the teacher broadcasters, are ideal as facilitators of learning from kindergarten to grade 12, including all other programs such as the Alternative Learning System or the ALS. According to 5,900 DepEd Radio, according to 5,930 student respondents, is an innovative idea for fully maximizing learning anytime and anywhere, with or without a pandemic. DepEd TV took learning to a new level, going beyond the, unus the usual and traditional methods of learning and demonstrating that education is never ending. For our respondents, we have 3,150 female respondents and 2,780 male respondents. For kindergarten, we have 442, and these are the breakdowns from kindergarten to grade 12. And the first question is, nakapanood ka na ba ng DepEd TV? 93% oo, and 6.9% hindi pa. So given this fact, almost talagang uh, majority of our respondents were able to watch DepEd TV episodes. Sa anong paraan mo napapat na panonood ang DepEd TV? First, we have for television, 3,810. For computer, 394. For tablet, we have 342. For laptop, we have 3,022. For wala, 10. Computer shop, although uh, I'm not familiar if uh, uh, before, last year kasi during GCQ, medyo maluwag ang restriction. Nakakaroon talaga ng open ang computer shop. We also have GMA for the box or the black box. Smart TV and others, 30%. Uh, we were not able to present the others kasi medyo marami yung sinasabi nila. But basically, more of uh, karamihan sa kanila ay nasa TV at laptop ang kanilang pinapanood. Pino sino ang mga kasabay mong manood ng DepEd TV lessons? 3,691 mga magulang, 3,219 mga kapatid, 155 kaklase, 130 kapitbahay, and 67% pinsan. This particular figure will tell us alagang, if it's for the welfare of our uh, children, talagang yung mga parents natin and other immediate family are very much welcome uh, to help yung kanilang mga students sa bahay nila. Kapag hindi mo naabutan sa TV lesson, Napanonood mo ba ang DepEd TV sa YouTube channel? Sabi nila, 3,774, oo. 918, hindi. And sabi nila dyan, kadalasan daw YouTube ang pinapanood nila. At yung iba naman, hindi, hindi nga alam na meron palang 
DepEd YouTube channel. We are not only airing sa ating YouTube channel, we also have live broadcast uh, sa mga official Facebook page ng DepEd Philippines at ng IBC 13 as our uh, network. Sapat ba ang 20 minutes, 20 minute lesson para sa isang Sapat ba ang 20 minutes para sa isang lesson? 4,470 sabi tama lang. 1,429 sabi naman nila masyadong maikse. And 31 ang nagsabi na masyadong matagal. But basically looking at the figure, talagang makikita natin na tama lang talaga yung 20 minutes na allotted time for our for every subject na meron tayo. Sa palagay mo, Malilito ka ba kung paiba-iba ang teacher o guro ng isang subject? 37% ang nagsabi na oo, malilito ako. 43% ang nagsabi na hindi ako malilito. And 20% ang nagsabi na hindi ako sigurado. Why are we asking this kind of question? Especially yung malilito-lito. Kasi as we all know, sa DepEd TV, we have our main teacher broadcaster. Meron din tayong tinatawag na understudy o yung tinatawag natin na partner ni the DepEd TV broadcaster. Kapag minsan, may mga emergency cases na si, si teacher broadcaster, meron siya prior commitment bago mag-taping, sinasalo siya ni UTB o ni understudy. Kaya minsan papansin niyo, for example, si Ma'am May Sevilla, minsan siya lahat, and then minsan makikita niyo yung ka-partner niya, si Sir Job Pilas Pilas before, na naging understudy niya. So, yan, binibigyan ko si Darosyon natin yan kasi sa formulation ng mga policy, isa yan sa mga dapat natin tingnan. Naayon ba ang tono at pagbigkas ng mga guro para sa iyong grade level? Kasi di ba, minsan sa klase, yung mga teachers na, yung mga students, pag hindi gusto yung boss teacher, talaga nagtatakip, medyo masakit sa tenga. Isa yan sa mga isa na sa alang-alang natin. Kaya nga, yung mga broadcasters natin, we are training them on proper voice modulation para pag humarap sila sa camera, talagang medyo okay. So, ang ginamit dito is linear scale in determining the appropriateness of tone and enunciation of teacher broadcaster. They will choose three if he or she thinks that the tone and enunciation of the TV is appropriate. One or two, if he or she thinks that the tone and enunciation of the TV is more appropriate to lower grade levels. Four to five, if he or she thinks that the tone and enunciation of the TVs is more appropriate for higher grade levels. And this is the result of the, start of the survey. Almost majority ang nagsabi na normal lang sa grade level nila, yung bosses ng teacher, teacher broadcaster. Meron tayong 4.6% and 8.4% na nagsasabi na parang mas bagay sa lower grades at yung iba naman nagsasabi na mas bagay sa higher grades yung bosses ng teacher. At nakatutulong ba sa pagsagot sa mga modules ang pananood sa DepEd TV? Kasi kanina pinakita, di ba? Maps based with activity sheets. So, ibig sabihin, they will be using DepEd TV video episodes as a supplement para makatulong sa pagsagot sa kanilang mga modules. Ang sabi nila, 97.5% ang nagsabing yes nagagamit nila ang Dep and TV episodes sa pagsagot ng mga self-learning modules and activity sheets. And roughly 2.5 ang nagsabi na hindi. And alam naman natin, most of the time, we are using Dep and TV for asynchronous learning. When we talk about asynchronous learning, we're just giving them the link and then our learners will watch it sa most convenient time nila. Ang next question is, kapag may tanong sa Dep and TV lesson, Nasasagot ba ng iyong guro? Let's try to figure out yung answer nila. 93% na nagsabi, oo. And 7% na nagsabi na hindi. So this figure, this data will help us or will give us an overview na talagang hindi natatapos sa bahay yung learning. Pag may hindi na itindihan yung mga students natin, tin tinutulungan sila ng kanilang mga guro sa pagsagot. Ah, sa pagsagot ng mga medyo hindi gaano malinaw sa video episodes. And another one is the effective utilization of DepEd TV. Naka-anchor pa rin ito doon sa tinatawag natin na 
CM Morano about suggested uh, distance learning delivery modalities. So, our focus is the DepEd TV and the radio-based instruction. What are the considerations? DepEd TV and radio shall be implemented in areas with access to television networks and or radio stations with programs dedicated to deliver the DepEd TV radio-based lessons. Lessons are utilized for these platforms are converted self-learning modules where the sequence of presentation is similar with what other learners use in online and modular distance learning. Teacher made videos that are aligned with the most essential learning competencies and TV video lessons that are mapped may be utilized. So, kanina nakita natin, no? our Bible here is the most essential learning competencies. Our teacher broadcaster, our teachers will create a script anchored doon sa, sa MELC. And then meron tayong tinatawag na self-learning modules sa bawat division. Meron tayong nationally produced self-learning modules. Yun yung nagiging basis ng scripts. And then once na quality assure ng scripts, ready na to for taping and gagawin na natin yung taping for the video episodes. Kaya papansin nyo talagang congruent from the MELCs to the SLMs, to the video lessons, and all other factors involving TV-based instruction. And, eh, ito yung mga nabanggit ko na rin po kanina, kaya medyo skip na po natin. So this is our Depet TV Program Grid, Program Grid website. So, recently, last, um, August 17, the Office of, Under the, Office of the Under Secretary for Administration issued OUA Memo 00082101173 or Deped TV Program Grid website. Ano nga ba yung Deped TV Program Grid website? This is the interface of our Deped TV Program Grid website. Another one. So let's try to navigate the Deped TV program grid. Connect to the internet and open a web browser. Type the URL. This is the URL. Later on, we're going to navigate this. Search the grade level and click it. The subject for kindergarten to grade 10 are arranged alphabetically. The weekly lessons are aligned and patterned to the most essential learning competencies for senior high school. The, the subjects are arranged according to the core subjects, applied subjects, and specialized subjects. So nakita nyo yung progression natin from discussing the key concepts of DepEd TV down to a recent study or survey, and now we are entering now this a program grid wherein this will be helpful to our teachers para makapag-integrate sila ng DepEd TV based, uh, ng TV based instruction. Later, papakita ko, I'll, I'll tour you dun sa tinatawag nating DepEd TV program grid website. Check for exact airing schedule in television which includes the date and the time. The title of the episodes is also clickable. It will directly look in the DepEd TV official YouTube channel. So, let's try to navigate the DepEd TV program grid website. So, I want it na naka-full tayo para medyo makita natin ang ating galawan. So, this is the interface of our DepEd TV Program Grid website. On top of it, we have the home, the teacher broadcaster, the grade 3, kinder to grade 3, grade 4 to 6, junior high school, senior high school, and inspirational videos. We have here our message from our Honorable Secretary, Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones, and the DepEd mission, vision, and core values. We also have here sections about awards and recognitions received by DepEd. So the second one is the teacher broadcasters. So syempre kailangan makita rin ng mga learners natin yan. We have here a gallery of our teacher broadcasters from grade 1, Grade 2, Grade 3, Grade 4, Grade 5, Grade 6, 
down to grade 12. We have here kindergarten to grade 3. For kindergarten to grade 3, this is user-friendly. To all, to all our teachers na gustong magamit ang ating TV-based instruction, watch this session kasi eh, di-discuss natin kung paano nyo magagamit ng program grid na ito. Hindi tulad before, pupunta pa kayo sa YouTube para hanapin. Ito talagang one-stop shop siya. Click na lang kayo ng click, then makikita nyo na kagad yung mga kailangan. For example, for kindergarten, for week 1, we have three episodes. Ito ay naka-anchor o align sa ating milk. So, ibig sabihin sa week 1, we have three episodes. Pagpapakilala sa sariling pangalan at kasarian, which will air on September 13 to 16. Kung papasin ninyo, no, very user-friendly siya. Halimbawa, week 1, 7.35 to 8. So, nakikita mo na agad na itong oras na to, ah, kindergarten yan. And then sa September 13 to 16, ang ere ay pagkilala sa sariling pangalan at kasarian. Our episode 2, pagkilala sa sariling gulang at kapanganakan, which will air on September 14 to 17. And episode 3, pagkilala sa sariling gusto at di gusto, which will air on September 15 to 18. If you're going to observe, talagang guided na guided na yung mga kindergarten teachers natin dyan. Mag-heart react na kayo, mga kindergarten teachers. Sa pagsisimula ng klase, pwede nyo gamitin yan. Punta lang kayo sa website and talagang mapaplat nyo na siya. Let's have an example. I will click this. Kung papansin nyo, clickable siya. I'll click this one. Then automatically, I will be redirected doon sa tinatawag natin na YouTube channel ng DepEd TV. And yung mga students natin, automatic din, makikita na kagat nila yung video for kindergarten. Unfortunately, I will not be able to play this kasi po makakopyright po yung baka may mga mag ano po dun sa videos po. So ayan po, ganyan lang siya gamitin. Halimbawa, tapos ka na sa kinder, we have week 1 to week 9. For grade 1, ayan, grade 1, araling panlipunan, week 1, ready po yan, no? nakikita nyo po. Ang oras ng araling panlipunan natin ay 8 o'clock to 8.25. We have week 1, week 2, down to week 8. Then the schedule of airing, nandiyan, again, clickable siya. Pag kinlik nyo, maliredirect kayo. We also have arts, edukasyon sa pagkapakatao, health, and other subjects na meron tayo. May ibang episodes dyan na for week 1, dalawang episode po, so pwede natin gamitin yung mga uh, TV lessons na yan. Ayan. Kung makikita ninyo, medyo talagang napakahusay at napakaganda na pagkakagawa ng ating DepEd TV website. Siyempre, would like to acknowledge the effort of our uh, the team behind this program grid website. We have Sir Mark, our technical assistants, Sir Vin Foster, Sir JP Vico, and Sir Ken Leonard Abanilla, and Raymond Kasama, na talagang isa sa mga na-conceptualize daw ng ating program grid. <laughs> and for grade 2, ayan po, if you're going to observe, we have here grade 2, ayan, nandiyan po talaga siya. Sir, paano po ito? Ito pong parts 5, week 5, episode 5. Sir, wala pa po siyang, hindi siya clickable. Ano pang ibig sabihin nito? Pag hindi siya clickable, ibig sabihin, hindi pa po na i up yung video episode sa YouTube natin. Sir, paano yan? Paano namin gagamitin? Ito po ang assurance. Bago mag-September 13, lahat po ng episodes will be clickable. I-click nyo lang, then automatically mare-redirect na kayo ron sa gusto nyong panoorin. So, eto yung beauty o yung ganda ng tinatawag natin na program grid. And, wait na po, may ayusin. Ha? Huh? 
So, automatic, mag-redirect siya talaga doon sa mga page natin. So, meron ba dyan other subjects? Yes. We have grade 4. Ayan, naka, makikita nyo dyan, talagang very user-friendly siya. Grade 5, grade 6, click nyo lang. Again, alphabetically arranged siya na para hindi kayo mahirapan. And then, click nyo lang. Then, mag-redirect na siya ron. Ayan, automatic, nag-redirect nag siya ron sa ating page na gagawin. So, ayan, gato po natin gamitin ang tinatawag nating DepEd TV Program Grid. So, we have junior high school. We also have senior high school. Teachers, don't worry, we will post this uh, link dun sa ating comment box para masave nyo na at kung sakali gusto nyo gamitin si DepEd TV sa pagtuturo ninyo, pwede nyo siyang mailagay. Again, our directors will be flashing yung official uh, link ng ating website later sa before we end our session. So, ayan. Honestly, napakaganda. Napakaganda ng program grade natin because it will help our teachers na mas maiplat yung TV lesson. And later on, tatakitaan ko kayo. We will show you how to plot our Depet TV episode sa ating weekly home learning plan. And, sige, iwanan ko na muna ang aking program grade. Let's go back to this one. Broadcast Program Schedule and Media Partners. For our broadcast broadcast program schedule, that is the program, the website. And for our media partners, saan ba? Sir Bud, saan ba namin pwedeng mapanood ang DepEd TV? And we have our media partners na pwedeng tumulong sa atin in delivering quality education and enriching last mile schools. These are our media partners and saan natin pwedeng mapanood si DepEd TV. Okay, so ayun po ang ating mga media partners kasi nyo mapapanood ang ating mga DepEd TV video episodes and hopefully uh, patuloy natin ang kilikin ng DepEd TV using the current platforms. How do we plot it sa ating weekly lesson delivery? I'll be showing you a prototype or sample ng mga what guide na nakuha ko and I would like to thank uh, our my mother division, uh, SDO Mandalu yung headed by our SDS, Dr. Romela M. Cruz, our Education uh, Chief for Curriculum and Implementation Division, Dr. Aline G. Mendoza, our SGO the Chief, um, Emma G. Arubio, our Education Program Supervisors, our PSDSS, 
our education program specialist in Mandaluyong. And syempre, yung tumulong sa akin, our, my, uh, my education program supervisor in mathematics sa Instituto Rodela sa Dona Pilar C. Gonzaga uh, Elementary School kay Ma'am Tess Pataksil. Maraming salamat for giving me an example of this and sa my, to my good friend, uh, si Sir Roy Haudalso. So, subukan natin magbigay ng sample. We have here grade 3 mathematics. Okay. For grade 3 mathematics, so medyo nakaka-problem lang, I'll be showing you for grade 3 mathematics. Okay. Hintay lang natin mag-open. So, itong grade 3 mathematics na to is a sample na, dinra, na nagawa ko kahapon with the help of my former colleagues in SDO Mandaluyong na talaga namang one call away. So, wait lang po. Ayan. So this is now our sample for our uh, what guide na nakita natin. So ito yung sample na hiningi ko from Doña Pilar C. Gonzaga uh, Integrated uh, Elementary School in SDO Mandaluyong. So this is the guide. And then the topic is visualize numbers up to 10, 10,000 with emphasis on numbers 1,001 and 10,000 gives the place value and the value of a digit in 4 to 5 digit numbers and reads and writes numbers up to one up to 10,000 in symbols and in words. So ayan, and then dito sa baba, kung papansin ninyo, this is the plan for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If you're going to observe, the topic here is this one. Panoorin ang, vid ang video ng pagpapakita ng bilang hanggang 10,000. Ito yung link na yon. Saan kinuha ni Sir Bads yung link na yan? Balikan natin yung program grid natin. I am teaching grade 3. I am teaching grade 3 on my example. Ayan po. Grade 3 mathematics. I look at grade 3 math. Then ito yung week 1 ko. Place uh, pagpapakita ng bilang hanggang 10,000. Once I click this, ayan po. Marerediret ako doon sa page kung saan sa site kung saan uh, ipapakita yung lessons about doon sa topic ko. So ayan, medyo nagloading lang but basically, yung mapupuntahan ng learners dito ay pagpapakita ng bilang hanggang 10,000. So ayan yung sample na video lesson na pwedeng magawa ng bata. That is for Tuesday. Balikan ko uli ang aking lesson. Noong Wednesday, more on asynchronous ako, more on synchronous ako and then on Thursday, nag-asynchronous ako halimbawa. And gusto ko naman panoorin ng learner itong video na to. Etong video na to, ang topic nito ay yung gives the place value and the value of a digit in 4 to 5 digit numbers. So nasaan yan? Balik ako kay Program Grid. Ito si Program Grid. This one. Episode 2. I will click this one. Then, marerederect na ako ron. Sir, saan galing yung link? Saan po nang galing yung link na nilagay nyo? Ito, DepEd TV Official. So, ayan. Makikita nyo talaga, no, yung ating program grid website talaga will be helpful to our learners and sabi nga ni ng ating butihing, uh, isang butihing senator natin, talagang world class ang mga TV episodes natin for our, uh, for our DepEd TV. So ngayon, inaano natin, no, pinapakita na natin yung tinatawag natin na kung paano natin pinaplot yung ating video episode. So, ngayon naman, meron ako isa pang file dito na talagang blanco, ilalagyan, ilalagyan lang natin siya muna.
Tingnan na natin ha. So I'll be looking dun sa file para magamit natin kasi Ayan. So this is my screen. Meron dito ang topic ko naman dito ay araling panlipunan tree na ipaliliwanag ang kahulugan ng mga simbolo na ginagamit sa mapa sa tulong ng panuntunan. So ayan, ito yung mga goals niya. Sa baba, meron ako ng lesson ko here. And then, panoorin ang video tungkol sa mapa at simbolo. So ako, grade 3 yan, grade 3 araling panlipunan, punta ako ulit sa website ko, sa program grid. This one. Hanapin ko yung araling panlipunan grade 3. Nasa taas, this one. Ang topic natin, mga simbolo ng mapa. Kapag ibig sabihin dalawang episodes yan, hindi yan magkapareho po ah, magkaiba yan ng content. So dahil first lesson ko siya, kiklik ko yung mga simbolo ng mapa. Then, lalabas tayo rito, makikita nyo rito sa aking screen yung lesson. Ngayon, paano ko siya mailalagay? Sa address bar, ayan, kopyahin nyo lang yan. And then, pag nakopya nyo na, balik kayo rin sa ginagawa nyo yung guide. And then, paste. Automatically, dun sa inyong lesson plan, nailagay nyo na siya. So, yung learners natin, pwede i-click na lang yan. Kasi, kadalasan na ginagamit Google Classroom, Messenger Class. I-forward nyo lang yan, yung link na yan. This is our video link para sa unang araw ng Araling Panlipunan. So, ayan. Ngayon, meron rin ako sa kabilang lesson ko ng Thursday. Bago ako magkaroon ng sam, bago ako magkaroon ng uh, ng last day for this uh, week. So meron uli akong discussion na balikan ang mga nagdaang aralin. So dahil dalawa yung video, pwede ko naman gamitin uli yung isa pang video. Nasaan yon? Balik ako kay Program Grid. Eto, si Araling Panlipunan 2, episode 2 ang gagamitin ko. And then, ayan. Pakita ko na ngayon, i-copy ko uli, and then ilalagay ko na rito sa aking sample na na lesson, na what guide. So ayan, ganyan lang po kung paano natin i-pwedeng ma-integrate at magamit yung uh, Depet TV video episode sa ating sa ating mga ginagawang what guide or mga learning plan. So ngayon, dahil Dahil si Sir Bads, ako honestly ako, medyo ilang buwan na rin yata, ilang taon na rin yata akong wala sa hindi nakapagturo. Meron akong isang uh, isang mabuting kaibigan mula sa SDO Mandaluyong. Siya ay mathematics teacher and uh, isa siya sa mga nakakausap ko rin pagdating sa mathematics. And let's welcome our um, senior high school teacher in mathematics, Sir Ray Colliado. Hello, Sir Ray. Hello po, Sir Bads. Good afternoon po. Ta? Good afternoon din po sa lahat ng viewers. Sir, parang nakamute po yata kayo. Ayan. Wait Hello lang, po, Sir Bads. Um... Good afternoon po. Ayan. Ayan. Okay. Ako pala naka-mute, Sir Ray. Kamusta, Sir Ray? Uh, mabuti naman po, Sir. Uh, although... Uh, Ganun din po, nag enjoy po talaga kami sa mga episodes ng Virtual Inset 2.0 kasama ang aking mga colleagues Highway Hills Integrated School. Shout out po. Ayan, so Sir Ray, no, nung, ano, nung when I asked uh, Sir Resti Rodelas about, Sir, sino ba sa mga teachers natin talaga yung very religiously nag integrate ng mga video lessons ng DepEd TV? Talaga sabi niya, si Sir Ray ang kausapin mo. So Sir Ray, ikaw as a teacher kasi ako, sabi ko nga kanina, uh, almost two years na akong hindi nakapagturo kasi nasa EdTech tayo. More on training sa nagagawa natin. Sa iyo, sir, sa umpisa, paano mo ba unang, ano yung mga considerations na pwede natin gawin as a teacher sa pagpili o sa pag-integrate ng video lesson? Um, sa amin po kasi, sir, sa atin po, sa SDO Mandaluyo, um, lahat po ng delivery modalities halos ginagawa po ng SDO Mandaluyo. So nag-offer po tayo ng uh, modular learning lang. Meron din tayong face-to-face uh, -face learning via Google Meet or via Messenger Classroom. So, ang ginagawa po namin ng mga teachers sa SDO Mandaluyong is that 
uh, nagkakaroon po kami ng soft copy and hard copy weekly home learning plan namin para yung soft copy po na po provide namin sa doon sa mga students na nago online or nakakapag online. Samantalang yung mga hard copy naman po na weekly home learning plans, yung tinatawag namin na what guide, ay naka ano naman po naka ready siya, naka printed kasama nung module na binibigay sa mga parents para mayroon ding kopya yung mga bata na nagmo-modular lang at walang kakayahan na mag-connect sa magandang internet connection sir. Ayun, so talagang sir, no, masasabi natin na lahat talaga ay nagagamit natin sa SDO Mundo, talagang na-utilize, hindi lang tayo nakapokus sa isang uh, learning modalities na meron tayo. Marami yan, eh. kumbaga talagang yung support ng mga division offices ay nag-uumapaw. Sir, ako kanina, nag-present ako sir ng sample, ng sample na ginawa kong what plan. Eh syempre, ah, hindi naman ako, ah, I'll be honest, kumbaga medyo baka mamaya magkaiba yung ginawa natin sir. Meron ka ba diyang sample ng learning plan na naihanda mo sir na kung saan na-integrate mo yung uh, video lessons natin, especially sa DepEd TV? Yes, sir. Um, allow me po to share my screen to share yes, sir. kung ano po yung naplat ko, sir, na ano, um, weekly home learning plan para sa ating mga grade 11 learners. So ako po, personally, I'm teaching grade 11 and grade 12. So ito pong weekly home learning plan po, let me just zoom this in. Um, Naka-anchor po siya sa General Mathematics Quarter 1, Week 1. So, nag-prepare lang po ako ng isang file kasi uh, meron po kaming consolidated what guide for all the teachers para makita namin na ah, si teacher ng English or si teacher ng uh, Calculus, marami pala siyang activities sa ganitong day, so magbabawas muna ako. So, meron po kaming ganong part pa rin ng consideration sa ating mga students. So, ito po yung nagawa ko for General Mathematics Week 1. Siyempre, naka-anchor din po yan sa MELCS. And then, katulad po ng pre-nascent ninyo kanina, Sir Bads, nagkaroon din po dito ng topic and then at the same time, expected output sa ating mga students. So sa Monday po, nagkaroon, uh, nagkakaroon po kasi kami ng dalawang beses na synchronous sessions sa grade 11 and grade 12. So naka-yellow po yan. So indicator na po yan sa aming home learning plans na uh, synchronous sessions ang mangyayari. So sa synchronous sessions po, makikita nyo po rito, they are required to answer the pretest of their modules, uh, which is the, which are their Clyde or Clyde learning modules, and then they are required to attend synchronous sessions. Ito yung mga students na namili na umatend ng synchronous o yung may kakayahan na umatend na umatend ng synchronous sessions. Para naman sa mga hindi kaya ng umatend, mayon po kami prepares during the asynchronous sessions. So mapapansin yung po dito sa Tuesday part na kablu po siya indicating na um, asynchronous time ito ng mga bata. So both ito po hard copy and soft copy po na binibigay namin sa students. Kaya po clickable po siya sa hard copy, uh, sa soft copy. Sa hard copy naman po, um, I felt like yung need na ishorten yung link. Kasi kung yeah. ikokopya natin yung link sa YouTube, medyo magugulan ang bata pag itatype niya yun sa, ano, sa browser ng cellphones niya. By the way po, um, kinonsider na rin po namin yung mga batang walang gadgets kasi sa Mandalu yung po nagkaroon po ang project ng LGU na lahat po ng bata ay mayroong tablets. So, hindi na yeah. po namin problema yan. Kaya napakaganda po ng project ng um, City Government of Mandaluyong. So, ayan po, sinorten ko na lang po yung DepEd TV link para madali, para doon sa mga gumagamit lang ng tablets at hindi siya clickable, yung mga kumuha ng hard copies. And then, if in case there are parts na mayroong silang concerns or hindi malinaw sa videos from DepEd TV, um, it's instructed po dito na magsulat lang sila ng mga questions. And then after that, meron silang nakatalagang activity for them to accomplish that day. So kagaya nga po nang nakalagay din dito, for their most convenient time. So kung napanood, hindi po nila kayang manood ng umaga, pwede po yun sa gabi, okay lang po yun sa amin. And then we also have our contextualized video lessons po sa SDO Mandaluyong, yung tinatawag po namin na Project SOAR. Yes. Parang katulad din po siya, inspired po siya ng DepEd TV. So natutuwa po kami sa DepEd TV kasi na-inspire po niya kami na gumawa din ng project intended for mathematics only. Pero ito naman po, kung si DepEd TV, purely um, kung ano yung uh, instruction is English, dito po sa ano sa Project SOAR, uh, more on ano kami, uh, mother tongue, Tagalog po yung binibigay namin ng instruction yeah. sa video lessons. So, dalawa po yung ginamit namin na videos kasi we feel like hindi sapat na um, meron kaming synchronous sessions, hindi lang din sapat na meron lang isa. Malay natin na yung students pala natin, kailangan pala ng further examples. So, meron po kaming 
uh, another video lesson for them intended for SDO Mandaluyo. And then, babalik po sila ng Thursday kung ganito po yung scheduling. Lahat po lang mga questions nila sa videos na napanood, pwede po nilang sabihin. Kasi sa messenger classroom po namin, kahit hindi po kami nagkikita-kita, nakakapag-discuss pa rin po sa messenger classroom. And then on Friday, complete na po nila yung task nila. And I think po, Sir Bads, napakaganda po talaga ng na naging set up sa DepEd TV, kaya na-inspire po ang lahat sa amin to have projects for with us. So ayun Sir Ray, no? so napakaganda ng iyong naging, uh, naging discussion about doon sa integration mo nung DepEd TV video episodes. So, And talagang, tama nga no, kami kasi ang ginagamit namin dito Sir Ray before is the SLM base ng CO and then meron din kami ginamit ng Region 4A. Yung mga video episodes sa Mandaluyong, correct me if I'm wrong no, yung trade module ang ginagamit. Yes sir, yung context yung module na ginawa ng Mandaluyong. BO. Yes po. Ayun. So, Sir Ray, so napakaganda nung pinakita mo. And ako, honestly, sabi ko nga, with, with the short notice, talaga nakapag, uh, napakaganda ng presentation mo para sa amin. Sir, do you have any any uh, advice to our teachers on how they can integrate itong mga video lessons na to? Kasi ay, helpful talaga eh para sa ating mga guro. Tama, Sir Ray? Yes, Sir Bads. Um... I feel like uh, in-encourage ko po lahat ng ating mga teachers from all over the country to uh, use DepEd TV episodes kasi kung panonoorin nyo po yung mga episodes, halimbawa po ako, personally, uh, bago po po yan nilagay sa aking home learning plan is uh, pinanood ko po muna kasi mamaya niyan yung difficulty level ng uh, video ay hindi para sa mga bata. That is what I thought. Pero at the end of the day, nung nakita ko po yung buong episodes, mas uh, for me po, bagay na bagay po siya sa mga grade levels na tinuturuan ko. At the same time, kahit ano pang uri ng student na meron tayo, uh, mas maiintindihan nila ang lessons. Kasi mas mahirap po ngayon ang situation because of uh, the pandemic. So the only way that we can do is to exert more effort by preparing something that is uh, relevant for all of them. As studies say, maganda po yung video audiovisual presentations for most of the learners. Ayan. So maraming maramat, maraming maraming salamat Sir Ray for sharing your uh, ideas and your knowledge about integrating uh, integrating this DepEd TV video episodes sa yung uh, learning plan and I, I hope we were able to inspire our teachers na talagang uh, na talagang gamitin and integrate nila yung DepEd TV. Again Sir Ray, congratulations and hope to see you soon personally pag pumunta ko sa Highway Hills. Thank you Sir Ray. Thank you po. And ayun, no, makita naman talaga natin na talagang very helpful itong mga TV episodes na meron tayo for DepEd TV. And again, talagang um, sa umpisa medyo mahirap yan eh. But uh, as time passes by, medyo nakakapag-adjust na tayo sa lahat ng ginagawa natin. And at the end of the day, let's always remember, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligence direction and skillful execution it represents the wise choice of mel of many alternatives this last slide will tell us that we need to prioritize quality over quantity and to be able for us to achieve quality we need to plan we need to do and we need to check our plan and to act plan without actions ay baliwala. So tuloy na ang sinasabi ko, because of this pandemic, na fast track lahat ng innovations na pwedeng gawin, na pwedeng i-implement, na pwedeng ihain. And as I close this session, I would like to thank our teachers, our Filipino teachers for lending your time with us, for allowing us, uh, for sharing your time with us. And alam ko lahat tayo ay naririto para sa iisang adhikain to deliver quality education to our learners at lagi natin katandaan we do it para sa bata para sa bayan and allow me to add this one we are all doing this para sa gurong Filipino again maraming 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 salamat po and I hope may naibahagi ako sa inyo about TV based instruction and proper utilization and plotting to weekly lesson. Again, this is Salvador Imanansala the first. Sir Bads, your project lead for DepEd TV. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po.
Maraming maraming salamat din sir Marin sa Marin Salas. Totoo nga, sabi niya, quality is never an accident. Tama ka dyan, teacher Carla. At nagpapasalamat po kami sa Deca TV, sir Salvador Malansala, and of course, sa buong EdTech Family Unit for allowing us, mga guru na katulad natin, teacher Carla, to share our talents para sa ating mga kapataan. Si teacher Carla ay magkasama po kami na teacher broadcaster for grade 10. Sige na, ano sabi ka, teacher Carla, para? I teach English. Yeah, I teach English too. Medyo. <laughs> Ako po ay sa PE. Makakasama din po ako. Hopefully din sa PE. Okay, so kita din so. Kaya nagpapasalamat po kami dahil nagtiwala po sila Sir Bad sa amin. Inalagaan po kami, inalagaan, hindi kami pinagayaan. And also, we would like to thank them for katulad natin siya. Kala ngayon, nandito kami kasama kayo at nagbibigay sa inyo na kasayaan sa araw na inyo. Tama rin siya gala. So, Pastor, ano ko po kayo kung Debit TV? Naku, dito sa Debit TV, natuto akong kumate talaga. At nakishare mo ang talent mo na kahit ilang take yan, laban at laban. Kasi alam mo, hindi ito para sa atin, hindi ito para sa ating teachers eh. Para ito sa mga bata na naghihintay sa atin. Nang matuto sa ibang paraan habang nandito pa rin. Yes, ako naman siguro yung na-develop ko yung talent sa pagkanta. Wow! Teacher Carl. <laughs> Na-develop niyang talent sa pagkanta. Kaya, it, kaya naman, kailangan marami natin ang boss. Teacher Carl, Teacher Carl, para sa mga guru, nanarap po ngayon, ito ang boses. Teacher Carl. <laughs> Sige, pagbigyan ng Teacher Carl, kasi mag-warm up na siya. And, by the way, Hopefully, mag-meet na rin po natin ang mga teacher broadcasters na batch 6 sa mga nag-apply po siya ng audition. See you soon! At ngayon po, dear teachers, nagkaroon po tayo ng picture taking kanina and kahapon, ano yan, pwede na po nila i-upload ito sa ating uh, Facebook page sa EdTech Unit. Meron po tayo ng Facebook page. Uh, post. Yes. 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 Ay, ano ba yun? Ano ba yun, Teacher Carla? Wait up, Teacher Carla, Vincent ka ba? Bakit? Wala ka, wala ka. Vincent ka ba? Kasi, kahit na pinaigot-igot ko na ako I don't want to turn around. I don't want to turn around. So, ulit din po ah. Pakilaga, don't forget our hashtag Vincent to day 2. At available na po sa ating EdTech Unit page. Ang pakicomment po ang inyong mga pictures ng day 1 and day 2 ng mga selfie natin. At mga pictures ninyo sa inyong mga lugar. So, it's time na for her. Pero sir, di ba sabi ko kanina, hindi lang tayo ang definite? Ay, totoo. Sure, Carla. Kasi alam mo, hindi lang pala definite ang nanonood sa atin ngayon. Iba't iba kahit siya ang nag-abang din sa atin ngayon. Tulad na, PNP. Kaya ko ba mo sa batiin? Yes! Sige mo tayo sa batiin? Yes. Say, uh, hello po, PO1 David Aaron Cruz, lang, uh, Tainay Rizal. Ayan, hello po sa inyo, hello po sa inyo. Uh, mula po kay T-Shirt Carla. Ayan. At binabati din natin. Shower out time. Shower out. Shower out tayo sa ating school head and teachers from Bala Elementary School, administrators and teachers of Kaularan High School and Novotas National High School, SDO Novotas. Uh, hello din sa mga, mga pag-aaral ng Kaularan High School and Elementary School from Candelaria East District, PSDS, Maria Fatima Calayat and Principal Cynthia Reynoso. Happy birthday to Augusto and Bulakla from Joseph. Joseph Conrad Bulakla. At hello din po kay Jerwin. 
Hernandez of <laughs> of D G A N H S from Ken. Hello din sa mga taga Rizal High School, SDO Pasig, yan ay pagbati mo lang kay Sir Mars here again. Binabati po natin ang Dakanda Victoria National High School Principal Don Juan Cruz, SDO Bulacan Claridon District, Ma'am Riza Madolig, Ma'am Racy Balbalosa, and Ma'am Marit Beth Foster. Yan, special shout out sa mga teachers ng Makati High School, especially kay Ma'am Rosely Gaulo, Ma'am Charina Visitor, and Ma'am Rio Ani Makabeyo uh, Angelis. Sa class, Cecilia Foundation Trainers, Romel Rendino, Hilda Hubbard, Lenevi de Guzman, Jen Lagayo, Ana Pagala, Zara Gagatiba, Marisa Gomez, Abriel de la Cruz, at kay Allen and Jonah Quiabao, Jamie San Juan, Marisa de la Cruz, and Laila Ipolito, at kay Isbel Gatiba. Pinamating po natin, si PSTS Mr. Luis M. Germina, and all teachers in Santissima Cruz Elementary School and to all the principals and teachers of Santa Cruz, this great SDO Laguna from Arlene Puy. Shout out to SDO Mantinlupa Kupa Elementary School. Shout out to mga mga at mga kikisip na gulo ng Kupa Elementary School. And Francis Elementary School, happy birthday, Principal Elmo! And happy birthday, Neil Armin Bautista, SDO Nueva Ecija. And uh, Sakura Fields Elementary School, okay, Principal Sir George Medivivo. This is from Fisher Suzette Cruz. Hello, so SDO Panopan Creative Team, Negros Oriental High School, San Domingo Elementary School, and Occidental Mindoro from Minasol, Calabio. Hello, Diposo San Ramon Elementary School, Happy Fiesta, Division of Kamsur, SDO La Carlota City, Negros Occidental, and Santo Domingo National High School, Calabo of Quezon. Ma'am Domina Abdiazza, yeah. Hello again, Mr. Sir Fred Mateos ng North, Bates Boulevard Elementary School, and Principal Jasmine L. Simpson. Ay, ito na, isa ito ba, Lady Teacher Carla? Kasi kakapon lang ito kong picture ni Ma'am na, na kahit na nagda-dialysis siya, pero pumili din siya na makasama din natin. Binabati po namin, Ma'am Van. Diyan, esaya na si Loco sa inyo, Ma'am. Ingat po and keep safe po lagi. Yes, Ma'am, keep safe po. Hello din sa mga tabi-SDO Manila. Especially in Santo High School, uh, Principal Rodrigo Nasi Dejade, Assistant Principal Ronald Salvatis, and uh, greeting from our teacher broadcaster, Ma'am Marjorie Chiu. Uh, shout out to all schools that are here, the Integrated School, in Cebu, San Jose del Monte National Trade School, Karen Mercado, Napar Mob City National High School, Makilala National High School, Agone West Central School, Puente Elementary School, Cebu, Makanawa Elementary School, Gineonan City, Santa Lucia National High School, Asturias, North Cebu, Tuluna National High School, Cotabato, SDO, SDO Bulacan, Baliwag North, DGMMS from Teacher, Bernini, Manuel L. Quez Elementary School, ng Quezon City, SDO Danao City, Durano Memorial Integrated School. And happy, happy birthday kay Sir Arvin Foster, mula rin ko kay Sir Ritian. Nice to be bandi na ako school sa Big Bigot Elementary School, Goa District, SDO Hong Sur. Balog National High School, San Fernando Cebu, Balanganga National High School, SDO Balata, Mandorian National High School from Sir Adil Beto, and Pitombo High School, Makati, and Makati High School Arts and Design Track. Special shout-out din sa ating family and staff ng Maranaque National High School Maine, headed by Mr. Jerry A. Lumapan, Jerry Pagbati, sa ating pinaka-napakagaling na mapanuging buo na si Ms. Che Medosa. Ayan. And thank you and shout out pra, to Rabia ng Bagong Barrio National High School, Sir Richard Fabio. So and that's it, teacher Carla. Meretso na tayo sa susunod nating topic. Ano ba to? Ano ba yung topic na to, sir? Ito ay, alam mo, sa panahon ngayon that we are the new normal, ang mga teachers natin ay nag-explore ng different uh, softwares para magamit sa kanilang klase. And that includes Adobe. So, para pakilala ang susunod nating topic. Okay. So, to, to tell us about applying creativity and innovating teaching through Adobe Spark, let me introduce to you one of our uh, excellent speakers. He is one of the EdTech specialists who is an accomplished public classroom teacher for 14 years from Burgos National High School, SDO Pangasinan 1. He is also a deaf and open educational resources national core leader, Microsoft Education Ambassador, 
Google Certified Educator for Level 1 and Level 2, and Adobe Certified Educator Level 1. Our resource speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Secondary Education major in Filipino at Pangasinan State University, Bayang Bang Campus. He is now taking up his Master in Public Administration major in Educational and Instructional Management. Meron, meron pa. Currently, he is the product, project lead of Adobe for Digital Design and Animation under the ICTS Educational Technology Unit under uh, dito sa atin sa DepEd, DepEd Central Office. He works continuously with his team and with the EdTech family with, uh, for new startups on the realization of bringing digital creations to life and delivering immersive, compelling experiences for teachers and learners school training. Grabe. For sure, marami, marami matututunan ng mga teachers natin. At for sure, sasagutin niya ang tanong na, Adobe ka ba? Yeah, pakilala mo na. Do you like it? I like it! <laughs> so, to, to give us the, the topic, or to tell us what is what is this Adobe Spark is, let's have Mr. Alvin A. C. Thank you, Sir Avinchel and Ma'am Carla. Good afternoon to all our participants this afternoon. I am Alvin C., one of the EdTech specialists, and my topic for today is all about... Let me, let me share my screen first. Okay, my topic this afternoon is all about applying creativity and innovative teaching to Adobe Spark. I would like Okay. Wait. I will show you my screen. Hello, teacher Carla, babalikan natin si Sir, uh, Sir Chechu, mm -hmm. uh, Sir Alvin. So, ngayon, nag-undergit na teacher Carla. Ano? Uh, kanina pinag-uusapan natin yung Adobe ka ba? Uh, Sige, <laughs> Adobe ka ba? I like it. Kasi, <laughs> Adobe ka ba? <laughs> Kasi, Gagawin ko lahat para, para maging baby kita. Hindi ko magagawin. Hindi ko magagawin. Alam mo ba ako tuwa kasi teacher Carla? Tayo mga teachers, happy happy lang po tayo. Ulitin ko teacher sa good vibes lang. Ha? Good vibes lang po tayo. And ulitin ko po, hindi po na ang entry ng pwersa. Ha? Voluntary pong participation sa Vincent na ito. Ngayon, balikan na natin para sagutin ng Adobe ka ba, Sir Alvin. Hello once again, good afternoon Sir Avingel and Ma'am Carla, sorry for the technical glitch. And now, let me present, present my PowerPoint. Okay, once again, I am Alvin C., one of the EdTech specialists. And my topic this afternoon afternoon is all about applying creativity and innovative teaching to Adobe Spark. I would like to start my talk from this quote of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Creativity is the key to success in the future. And primary education is where teachers can bring creativity in children at that level. Indeed, that we need to teach creativity to our learners as early as primary level because this is one of the foundations of their knowledge. In a study conducted by Adobe on why creativity matters, 82% of surveyed adults wish they had developed more creativity in school. And 96% also said that creativity is an important part of their jobs, as well as believing creativity contributes to economic growth. And every development known to mankind was always started with creativity. 
and promoting creativity in schools as early as primary level can help children increase their confidence and resilience to better prepare, uh, prepare them for their future. And creating activities such as singing, dancing, or acting play a big role in the development of social skills such as communication, sympathy, and respect. Creativity will always be an advantage, especially in time where the skill is becoming prevalent in most industries today. And now, let us define what is creativity. Creativity is related to imagination or conceptualization, and innovation is related to implementation. Innovation is a process that begins with creative idea and ends with producing something of value for students, for community, and for, and for the people. And innovation can be a product, system, principle, or theory. The main objective of innovation is to help the people. And one of these innovation nowadays is Adobe Spark. What is Adobe Spark? Adobe Spark is the integrated web and mobile solution that enables everyone, especially teachers and students, to easily create and share impactful visual stories. So, ibig sabihin, even you're a newbie, sa tool na ito, you can create uh, digital content easily, uh, user-friendly. And, you know, we have three story formats for Adobe Spark. So, means to say you can create three different digital contents. And one of that is Adobe Spark. What is Adobe Spark? Adobe Spark is the fun and fast and easy way to create stunning graphics for any occasion. No design skills necessary. So, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi ka magaling, wala kang alam sa pag-conceptualize ng isang graphic design, you can do it by using Spark Pose. There are five ways you can use Adobe Spark Pose in your classroom. First, character codes. Use Adobe Spark Pose to create graphics to share an idea or concept based on characters or author's code from a text or novel or maybe from a movie. Just like this example. This example is from the movie uh, The Lion King. Mufasa said, believe in yourself. And there will come a day when, other, when others will have no choice but to believe with you. It's a great way for students to share their understanding of character traits or to analyze characters. The second one is memes. We all know that memes is very rampant to all social media platforms. Kaya nga today, ang pinakauso sa araw na ito ay I'm not a robot. That is example of memes. Memes are images or videos captioned with text to express an idea, whether in numerous way or inspirational thoughts. Adobe Spark is perfect tool for creating memes. Students can create memes for classroom rules or procedure or literary works, icebreakers, or learning new vocabulary. And the third one is book cover. This activity is applicable to all grade levels. Give, it, uh, give them an opportunity to redesign covers of novel or create a new one from a short story or they can make an they can make a book cover out of their autobiography so 
ibig sabihin, you can use this hindi lamang sa English, Filipino subjects, also in, uh, in, the, in all uh, cross-subject areas. The fourth one is poster. With Adobe Spark, students can create posters for things like school art show, uh, safety rules, events, and many more. So this is an example of um, invitation, whether you can use the mobile app or desktop version of Adobe Spark. And the last one is story or comic strip. One cool feature of uh, Adobe Spark is being able to add multiple images into one graphic. Basically, creating a multiple cell, as I call it, a comic book layout. So, a student can create their own sequential stories using their own artwork, uh, uh, using their own artwork, pictures, or somehow. So, kung mayroon mga naka-store sa kanilang phone, they can use it. It's a neat way for students to creatively tell a story. So, now, um, we will have a short demo on how to use Adobe Spark. Okay, so just wait a minute. Okay, so I, I hope you can see my screen. Okay, so now, uh, okay, wait. Okay, now go to your browser at your Omnibox, just type spark.adobe.com. That click, just wait for how many seconds? And now this is the interface of the uh, spark.adobe.com. If you want to log in, you can click continue with Google or continue with your Facebook account. If you have an Apple account, you can use it or sign up with your email or log in with Adobe ID or you can use also your school account. But in this demo, I will use my Google account. And now we are here at Adobe Spark homepage. Just a wait. We will wait for how many seconds, I guess. Okay, and now this is the interface of Adobe Spark homepage. You can see the plus sign. If you're going to click that, you can see the flyers, web page, video, branded graphics, custom size graphics. And the other one is the homepage, projects, brands. And here's the things you can create with Adobe Spark. You can create collage, web page, slideshow, presentation, Instagram post, portfolio, branded, and custom size. And in the lower part, so you can pick where you uh, where you lay up. So these are your projects, and actually these are my projects. So, wag po kayo magalala, it will automatically save lahat ng inyong projects. And in the lower part, on the bottom part, these are the templates for education. So, let's click the explore. Explore more templates. And I will going to use this template for our demo. Okay. 
Ayan. So, nagkakaroon ng ilang seconds lamang to start our new project. Okay, so, kung mas babilis ang inyong internet connection, it will load faster. Okay, so while loading, okay. So, nandito na tayo. If you want to change the text, Okay, you can change the text. Just click this. Just click the text. And so, here you can change it. So, pwede mong palitan kung anong gusto mong text. So, you can change the color, te the text of the colors. You can change the font size and the font style here. And aside from that, okay, let's go to the color. Just click. The text, you can change the colors. You can change also the effects. If you want to have a space on the text, you can click it. You can turn on if you want. So, page ring, e click and shadow. Ayan. So, mapapansin nyo. If you're going to click the shadow, we can change the angle of the shadow. And, okay, so napapansin nyo, nagkakaroon ng changes sa ating text and even sa ating outline. Kung gusto nating tanggalin o gusto nating magkaroon ng outline. So aside from that, the cool feature of Adobe Spark Post ay nakaka-create ka ng new style. Just click find a new style. So, see? So, nagkakaroon siya ng panibagong mukha. Panibagong layout. Another layout. Okay. Aside from that, you can duplicate the text or the picture by clicking the duplicate icon or if you want, you can delete that icon or you can choose another icon by clicking the, the icon. Ayan, so pwede natin siyang palitan. We can change the color. Ayan po, nababago po natin. So aside from that, we can invite other people to have collaborate with. So just clicking this um, icon, so pwede po natin invite even two students can collaborate with one project, even uh, one teacher to other teachers. They can collaborate. So aside from that, we can also download our project using PNG uh, format, JPEG, or PDF. Ayan. So pwede rin po natin siyang resize. We can resize our project. Pwede siyang, pwede siyang maging social, pang social media post, Instagram. Or we can use also letter size, poster size, card size, A5 size. And we have also animation. So tignan po natin kung ano mangyayari. See. Okay, so napakagala, eh, napakaganda as very useful po siya. Easy to use this kind of uh, application tool. So, ayan. Aside from that po, so, if we're going to check or click the homepage, so makikita natin ang ating project dito na nag-save automatically. So, you don't need to worry na mawawala ang iyong mga pinaghirapan. And now, so I will stop my sharing and let's continue with my presentation. Okay. And now, I'm going to discuss... Okay, now I'm going to discuss 
Spark Video. Spark Video lets you quickly create eye-catching video. So, so aside from uh, aside from Spark Post, we have Spark Videos. You can create video, and we have five Adobe Spark Video project ideas for your students. One is invitation, hosting an event at your school. You can use Adobe Spark Video to create a stunning invitation to a school event such as the uh, first day of school, parents and teachers assembly meeting, sports event, concert, or even such as uh, enrollment. Siba? We can create a video invitation. And for the second one, we have book report or book reviews. Do you assign students to write book reports or reviews? Instead of writing books review, why not um, create a book report? Diba? Gumawa ng book report or book review. A student can tell about plot, theme of the book, depending on the grade level. You can break the book into sections. Have a one group create a video about the plot. The other group can do the theme, story elements, etc. A student can create a video analyzing characters in the book. Diba? Napakaganda. Pwede rin natin itong gamitin sa iba't ibang subjects, not only English and Filipino. The third one is classroom highlights. Do you share the happenings in your class with your parents? So, karaniwan, sineshare nyo ba yung mga nangyayari sa inyong klase? A great way to share classroom activities or events is by creating a highlight reel. This is a perfect way to show off your classroom and students. Yung mga nangyayari sa inyong, um, inyong mga students, pwede nyo siyang gawan ng video. Yung mga activities such as group activity, minsan meron tayong mga uh, even hindi lamang sa classroom, even sa school events. So meron tayong mga tinatawag na uh, <clears throat> yung mga enrollment, brigade, eskwela, we can create a video for that. The next one, is step by step how to do video need to create a step by step video ayan napakagandang gamitin ang spark video it will helps you it will help you to create a video with a step by step guide so pwede kang gumawa sa TLM ng um ng how to cook adobo how to cook sinigang or how to solve math problem in um, algebra, in sabi nating ibang subjects, or you can do a step by step process ng experiment in science. The next one is events. How many of you enjoying looking at photos or videos of previous events? So mahilig tayo niyan mag scroll at mag upload, di ba? So now, you can create a video of a, res, a recent classroom or school events. A student can create a video of different parts of the sports day. For example, uh, task them with create, uh, task the students to create videos of different activities during the events. So ayan, basketball tournament, tag rugby games, or egg and spoon race. So you can create. So napakadaling gumawa ng video. So now... We have a short demo again. Okay. Going to have a short demo on how to use Adobe's part video. Okay. This is the homepage of uh, Adobe Spark. You just click the slideshow. Yeah. Every great story starts somewhere. Sabi rito, kailangan natin ng title. Going to use Brigada. 
Escuela 2021. Then click, click next. Okay. So by uh, we can pick a story template na ready dito sa ating uh, Adobe Spark video. We can click, uh, we can choose promote an idea, tell what happened, a journey story, or an invitation. I will going to pick an invitation. Ayan. Just wait lang, titignan natin kung anong mangyayari. Paano tayo makakagawa ng napakadaling video para sa atin. So, if you want to use this na maging guides, you can click this or you can watch this um, uh, quick tips na galing sa uh, Adobe Spark video kung paano gumawa ng video or if you're ready, you can click OK, I'm ready. And now, click video to upload your stored video in your laptop. Ayan, so pipili lang tayo rito. I will use this video. Ayan. The maximum allotted time for you to save your videos is 30 seconds sa bawat slide. Ngayon, we can trim it down by clicking this. Ayan. So, going to use only 3 seconds or 4 seconds. Then, click save. Pagtapos ka na. Just wait lang po. Ayan. Okay. So, ito na po ang uh, ating video. We can edit this. Okay. So, we can add audio by clicking this uh, microphone icon. Hold lang po natin habang nagsasalita tayo. Ayan. So, nagre-record siya automatically. So, we can add text. Or icon, we can add our title. Brigada. Ayan. So, we can... Play or preview. Ayan. So aside from that, pwede po tayong mag-add na music. You can add music. Nandito po ang music library ng Adobe Spark Video. So we're going to click Whistle Away. Ayan. The good thing sa Adobe Spark Video, you have guide on how to create your video content. Dito po yung guide nasa baba. So you can add a video about the events. You can add video uh, with uh, what it's exciting about the event, uh, when it happens. So kailang ba nangyari yung inyong tinatawag na event. So, pwede po kayong maglagay dyan. Ito po ang inyong guide. So, you can also share this one. You can publish or invite someone to have to call. You, you can invite someone to have a collaborate with. So, you can also save this video in your Google Drive. So, you can also download your video. Ayan. Pwede po natin siyang i-download pero hindi na po muna natin siya i-download. So, you can change also the layout. Pwede siyang full screen. Tignan po natin, pwede po siyang caption. Aside from that, we can resize it. Ayan. Wide or square. Ayan. So, yan po ang ating uh, quick run-through ng ating Adobe Spark video. So, wag po mag-alala ulit. 
automatic po siyang nagsisave sa ating project. Okay. And now, let's may, punta na po tayo sa last part. I'm going to discuss the last one. Now, format ng Spark ay ang Spark page. Spark page allows you to create web page to convey beautiful, shareable visual stories and social graphics. There are five ways to use Adobe Spark page with your students. Una, Adobe Spark page is a great tool to highlight photography or artworks, make photos stand out with variety of page layout. It's a great way for your students to highlight and display their work. So, pwedeng photo essay of an event. So, photo essay, photo essay ng activity in your classroom or kaya photo essay ng one week ng kanilang um, activity sa iyong subject or in other subjects. So, yan po ang photo essay. And the second one is portfolio. Portfolio. Are you looking for a place to collect all your works or the work of your students? Ito ay isa sa magandang feature ng Adobe Spark page. Adobe Spark's page provides space and features that enable everyone to curate their own work and create gorgeous portfolio or resume. So uh, as a teacher, so we can uh, digitize our MOB sa ating mga... Uh, RPMS, pwede po natin gamitin ang Adobe Spark uh, page. Next, the third one ay about me. Everyone has a story to tell. Every student has a voice to share. So, Adobe Spark page is a great resource to share and tell your story. So, you can create web page, add images, videos, galleries, o mga web links. So, you can uh, make your personal vlog or blog. So, pag sinabi nating blog, more on article. At pag sinabi nating vlog, more on video content. So, pwede po natin silang ipag-combine dito sa Adobe page. You can create vlog and blog. Next, report. You can put digital twist to your traditional assignment like book reports, essay. So, pwede silang gumamit ng Adobe Spark page. At ang panghuli ay journal. Okay, so um, journal. So, Adobe, uh, Adobe Spark page is perfect for documenting trips, events, in our school or your online class journey. So, pwede kang gumawa ng page tungkol sa iyong online class journey. Student can also create content and companion apps uh, ng Adobe Spark Post and Adobe Spark Video. So, ibig sabihin, pwede po nating magamit si Adobe Spark Video and Adobe Spark Post sa Adobe Spark Page. So, combination na po ito. So, now... Um, magkakaroon po tayo ulit ng quick demo okay me share my screen okay let's go back to our uh, Adobe Spark homepage so by clicking the plus sign and click web page so we can create a web page. Yan, mag-start na po tayo mag-create ang ating web page at title. So, pwede ko ilagay rito ay cats. So, we can add subtitle or write your name as the owner of this web page. Then, click the plus sign Ayan, to add photo so you can upload so pag 
uh, may naka-store ka sa phone mo, okay lang. So, you can find free photos from uh, Adobe Spark page uh, library. So, type cats. So, hindi po kayo mangagamba about copyright issue kasi po all the pictures, uh, music, and videos na makukuha sa Adobe Spark ay openly licensed resources. Then, I will choose picture. Ayan po, pipili lang po tayo kung anong gusto natin gamitin. Okay. Then, punta po tayo sa baba. Here, by clicking the plus sign again, we can add photo, text, buttons, video, photo grid, glide show, split layout. So, mag-add muna tayo ng text. Pwede natin sabihin, grids of cats. Ayan. So, pag na-type po natin yan, Meron po tayong H1 or H2. Means to say, H1 headline 1, pwedeng H2 headline 2. Headline 1, so, pwede po natin siyang i-align center. Then, click ulit tayo ng plus sign. Magdagdag mo naman po tayo ng photo grid. Ayan. So, going to select pictures. Related to our topic. Ayan po. So, automatic po na nag-layout siyang mag-isa. Based on the size of the pictures. Okay. So, click save. Aside from that, pag nag-click po natin ang save, pwede po tayong mag add ng video. So, saan po natin pwedeng makuha ang video? Punta po tayo sa YouTube. Ayan. Select po tayo ng video. And we're going to copy the URL to, to embed the video. So, pwede po natin ayan uh, related to cat. Just copy the URL. Yeah. Paste it. Yeah. Then, click save. Okay. So, ito na po ang ating home page. So, we can preview kung ano po ang interface ng ating Adobe Spark page. Yan to po ang mangyayari sa ating Adobe Spark page. So, aside from that, we can change the theme. Ayan po. Ito na po siya. And, kaya na natin, we can share it. Maghahanap tayo ng ating co-teachers na magko-collaborate sa ating homepage or students to other students, they can collaborate sa isang homepage. So, pwede rin po natin siyang i-publish or i-save sa ating Google Drive or print it. Ayan. So, ito po ang ating Adobe Spark homepage. Okay. So, before I end my to Ayan, sandali lang po. So, diyan po nagtatapos ang aking topic all about Adobe Spark. So, before po tayo magsimula matapos, uh, let me uh, greet, ayan po, magkakaroon po muna tayo ng ba batian. So, babatiin ko muna ang aking SDO1 Pangasinan Family to our uh, SDS, uh, Dr. Ellie is Ubaldo, our 2A SDS, Dr. Yosdado Aykayabyab, and Dr. Uh, Maria Criselda Okang. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Thank you po sa um, 
o family ko sa SDO1 Pangasinan. Siyempre, binabati rin po natin ang aming CID Chief Dr. Carmina Gutierrez and uh, ang aming SGOD Chief Dr. Angeline S. Kasipit sa aking PSDS Dr. Lian B. Buston to my principal Mr. Ernesto P. Cabudoy at sa aking head teacher Ma'am Rosalie B. Ancheta. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyo dyan. Thank you to all our participants who are still with us this afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat po at binabati ko po ang aking Burgos National High School family at ang Burgos District uh, district at sa buong SDO1 Pangasinan. I want to leave this quote for you, my dear teachers. Technology is the teacher's weapon to connect the learners with the world and prepare them for the future. Once again, Thank you po sa inyong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat din, Sir Alvin C. Totoo na ang technology talaga ay laking tulong sa atin, mga, sa ating mga teachers, especially ngayong nasa yung normal tayo, di ba? Totoo. Yan ay bahagi na ng ating development niya that we become the technology-empowered um, teachers. Yes, that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, bago tayo dumako sa ASA pang tungkol sa technology na topic, shoutout muna tayo mga binisa, yes, teacher Carla. Very, very Carla. quick uh, shoutout lang. Hello sa Valenzuela National High School, sa kanilang principal na si Dr. Christopher Delino, uh, and sa teachers and staff and all the department heads. Uh, ito ay magbating wala sa ating napakagandang teacher broadcaster na si Ma'am Rika Pinggan. At hello po sa SDO San Leonardo Annex. Mamampangan, Elementary Annex SSES. Hello po sa Administrators and the Benedictine Sisters of St. Scholasticus Manila, Manila, Pampanga, Marikina, Bacolod, from this divide. Magandang magandang hapon din sa New Era High School Mapi Department, Teachers and Staff, by Head Teacher Pamela Edangal, Principal Ferdinand Contillo, iyari pagbati mo lang kay Ma'am Ruby Aguan. Hello din po sa Loreto Remedios Montebon National High School, the Bogon District, SDO Cebu, at Marangal National High School, and to Madam Cynthia Cosmiano Marapao, Merle Cosmiano Cedro, and the Master Teachers of Surigao City Pilot School, Division of Surigao City, Caraga Region. Ito, sir, napakagwapo nito. Hello kay Sir uh, King Albert Nervesa from Rizal High School, SDO Pasig, at ang kanyang principal na si Sir Gilbert O. Inocencio. Hello, sir. At bumabati din po ako sa mga teachers ko. Meron po tayo kasama from private schools in Anabotas, sana sa Academy. Hello po sa inyo lahat. I love you. Castro Elementary School, SDO Pasig. Principal Ma'am Mara Fabilia Diego from Ma'am Lorna Loguitas. Yan, Prof. Leno College. Ay, wow. Hello po, Prof. Hello po. At yung Sir Leo Cantillang and Ma'am Evelyn Pagio of SDO Caloocan. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello din kay Sir Joshua B. Obayas ng Santa Cruz Elementary School. At sa Timoteo eh, Paez Elementary School. Sa kanilang principal na si Ma'am Brisilda B. Cueto, yan ay pagbati mula kay Ma'am Mary Lugala. Eduardo Lugto, Administrative Staff of SDO Caloacan. Hello po. Si Bulan Central Elementary School, headed by Alvira Sidiones. PSDS Rose Torres and SDO Negros Oriental, headed by Sir Rene. Celine, Pauline from Teacher Broadcaster, James Anthony Diputado. Happy birthday, Teacher Karen Padilla. Padilla, Teacher Broadcaster for TLE. Hello po sa TLE Department. Happy birthday. Ng Dakanlao. Gregorian National High School from Ma'am Teresa Abaglia. Yes, that's right. Ito pa, uh, hello sa Gregorian Del Pilar Elementary School, SBO Manila, sa kanilang mga master teachers and teachers, Team Cafe, for some Cameroon, Clerky Bells, diyan ay pagbati kay Teacher B, Ma'am Maribel Bulalayan. At mula po kay Ken, shoutout po sa Nina Bunya na maganda si Ma'am Big SP na ng DGA NHS. Hi, Nina! At alam mo, Teacher Carla, no, nag-browse ako kanina, di ba? We informed our teachers na sa EdTech Unit page po. I-chat niyo po yung day one photos niya, day two photos po ninyo. At nasilip ko, nais kong batihin yung mga nakakatuwa mga pictures po natin. Nakakataba ko ng puso. Hello, Ma'am Arcel Grace Sanchez Ramos na talagang side by side na kompleto niya ang heart natin. At ang tender loving pose. Ang tender loving pose. At ang barkada groovy na Dinadyawan Elementary School at SDO Aurora. At alam mo, bukod sa pagiging guro, sinasabay din nila ang pagmamahal at 
uh, pag-aaruga na sa pamilya, binabati ko yung mga nababanding dyan kasama ang kanilang anak at mga asawa at pamilya. And, nandyan din ang tinabyo ng National High School ng Katmon Cebu, ang K-Drama Groovy ng Librada Avelino, Elementary School Manila, at ang maglong tropa ng Baybay National High School, Batangas. Hello po sa inyo. Hello po kay Mata Maril Montero uh, ng Taikin Elementary School ng Liliw, Laguna. Ang gagaling at ang guwapo at ang ganda daw po ng mga hosts. Uy, wow. Yes. Thank you, so, thank you po. 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 Thank you Thank you so much, Mom Roma. Okay. Uh, ito pa. Hi to Sir Christian Tesoco, Pejoso from Apolonia F. Rafael. Rafael Elementary School, Estelio Valenzuela, together with his co-teachers and school principal, Ma'am Merle B. Oganiza. And happy Vincent learning to all from Kalawaan Elementary teachers, especially to Miss Bell Concepcion and to Miss Joyce Tumama. And just na, binabati ko ang mga public school teachers na mga kabatch ko from UST Batch 2011. Hello po sa inyo. At ngayon naman, dumako na tayo sa usapin. Ito, teacher Carla. Minsan, nakaka-stress nung pag may nangyayari sa ating mga laptop, sa ating mga gadgets, at isa yan pala sa dapat matutunan ng ating mga guru. So, to talk about troubleshooting equipment and digital device awareness, narito po the President of the Information Technology Officer, Philippines, from Olongapo City, let's welcome Sir Arthur M. Aquino. Hello po, Sir Arthur. Nais nice po namin marinig ang boses po ninyo. Pacheck lang po ng ating uh, mute. Baka rin naka-mute po kayo, Sir. Opo, sorry, sorry. Thank you so much po. Ay, ako. <laughs> Opo. So, okay lang po yung sound? Narinig nyo na ba ako? Hello po. So, <laughs> so, so, ngayon, no? so yun nga yung natapat sa akin. Share ko lang po yung screen ko dahil limited time lang po tayo. Aha. Sandali lang po. Nakashare. Ayan, okay na. So okay na po tayo. So magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. So ito po yung na ano nga sa akin. Hindi discuss natin ngayon troubleshooting equipment and digital device awareness. So masyado pong broad yung topic natin. So kaya pinilter ko na lang po kung ano yung alam ko na makakatulong sa mga teachers natin nationwide. So ang una na po natin pag-uusapan dito ito. Uh, seven common mistakes we do without realizing it. So marami sa ano po sa pagiging ITO sa pag-igot ko po dito sa mga school dito sa amin sa ibang division uh, sa mga schools may mga napapansin po kasi ako na uh, common mistakes na nagagawa natin pero hindi po yun nare-realize ng mga user natin so ngayon po i-discuss i-discuss po natin siya so sige po samahan niyo po ako unang-una ayan saving files to your desktop so napansin niyo naman po no So, alam ko po, familiar kayo dyan. So, may nakikita po kayo dyan na mga teachers natin na ganito po, ka ano yung ano nila, kagulo. Kano ba sabihin yan? Yung desktop nila. Kasi ang, ang rason dyan is madali daw nilang makita yung mga files nila. Pero without knowing na ito po ay isa sa dahilan kung bakit po nakabagal ng system. Lalo na po kung ang unit natin ay medyo may kalumaan na at hindi na po siya uh, updated. So, yung marami pong uh, shortcut na ganito, malakas po yung ano yan, makapagpabagal ng system natin. Kaya kung po pwede, iwas-iwasan po natin yan. So, yun, sandali lang po, no? may tawag. Then, number two, setting your own virtual memory size. So, kahit po nung dati, nung una, Pinakikiala ko pa, pinakikiala man ko po to, kinakalikot ko talaga yan, lahat yan, gusto kong palitan. Sabi nila, double your RAM, uh, check your virtual, pero later on, na-realize ko po talaga, 
na hindi po dapat ito pinakikialaman natin. So as is lang po yan, huwag lang po natin gagalawin yan. Kasi po, pag nagkamali po tayo dito, hindi po bibilis ang system natin, lalo po siyang babagal. Okay, number three. Yan. Adding too many items on your right-click menu. Kung napapansin nyo po, ito po yung right-click menu ko. Yan. So, kung, iba, kung i-stop ko yung ano, konti lang yan. Pero pag nag-right-click po kayo, at ganito po, kadami yung lumabas, magbawas na po kayo. Every time na nag-right-click po kayo, kumakain po yan ng maraming sources. So, bis lang po, ay bawas-bawas lang po tayo. Then, number five, using registry cleaner. So, sa mga advanced user po, okay lang siguro. Pero sa mga uh, sa mga normal user, nakatulad ko po, eh, huwag na po natin gagalawin itong registry cleaner. Ayaan na po natin yung registry. Opo. So, iwasan po natin itong galawin kasi po, imbis na kuminsan, instead na bumilis po yung system natin, lalo po siyang babagal. So, alam ko po, naranasan ko rin pong gumamit ng mga mababagal na system. Lahat po ng paraan gagawin natin dyan para lang po may ayos natin. Pero ang totoo po is, hindi po tayo nakakabagal, ay nakakabilis, kundi nakakabagal po tayo ng system natin. So, next. Ayan, not restarting your laptop. Okay. Yung iba po kasi, napapansin natin, pag masyado tayong busy, hindi na po talaga natin nare-restart yung laptop natin. Kung baga, napansin nyo, binababa na lang natin siya. Kung baga, para po ba yung mga Mac user? Sa Mac user, di ba, binababa na lang. Pero lagi po natin tatandaan, kailangan po natin mag-restart. Kung naging habi nyo na po ang binababa lang yung screen, at least po sana, at least once a week, mag-restart po tayo ng system natin. Kay Windows po, napaka-importante po sa kanya ang start. Kaya, yun pong nare-request ko, uh, isa po ito sa common, common mistakes na nakikita ko sa mga teacher na user natin na hindi po talaga na sila nag-restart ng system. Binababa na lang po nila. Okay. Oh. Yon, number 7. Kung tayo po ay naka-SSD, naka-SSD po, naka-SSD tayo, wag na po tayo magde-defrag. Yung uh, actually po pag naka-SSD tayo, hindi po 'yon na naka-design for defragging. So, kung naka-mechanical po tayo, okay lang po mag-defrag tayo para po bumilis, sabi nila. Pero kung naka-SSD po ang gamit niyo, SSD M.2, MB, NVMe, so hindi na po natin kailangan mag-defrag pa. So, okay na po tayo doon. Pag ano. Then, next. Yan. Ito po yung ating, sandali lang, check lang natin ano, no? check lang natin ang comment dito. Sandali lang po. Yan. Ngayon ko lang nakita, hindi na uso yan. Okay. May na-miss daw ako, number 3. Sige. Ay, ito po pala. Sorry, na-miss ko. Napabilis ako ng pindot ito. Feeling your hard drive for more than 80% capacity. Pag nagre-read na po yung hard disk natin, magbawas na po tayo ng file. O, parang bawa, dito sa example ko, no? So, nagbawas na siya. So, huwag na po natin ito. Magbawas na po tayo dito. Hanggat maaari, iwasan po natin maging red dito. Dapat po dito ay kulay blue lang. So, ito po. Yung example ko po dito is red na. So, iwasan po natin ito. Hindi po siya maganda. Then, yan. Gina-check ko rin yung mga comments dyan. No? So, maraming salamat po. So, forward na tayo. Dito na tayo, practical guide. Ito, may, minsan... May mga nagre-request din sa akin. Paano ba talaga bumili ng electronic device? Ano ba talaga yung kailangan natin dito matutunan? So kasi usually guys, pag pumupunta tayo sa mga ano, sa mga department store, kumbaga overwhelmed tayo sa napaganda ng mga specs, di ba? Kumbaga tinatadtad talaga tayo ng ano eh, tinatadtad tayo ng kumbaga yung magagandang terms terminologies nila. 
So ano ba talaga yung dapat na principles natin sa pag ano, sa pagbili? Uh, ito po yung una natin dapat gawin. Ano po ba talaga yung purpose natin sa pagbili ng cellphone, sa pagbili natin ng gad ng laptop, lalo na po ngayon pasukan. So alam ko po, po maraming nanonood sa atin ng mga teachers na mga nanay, tatay, kuya, ate. So bibili kayo. Siguro isa dito, sampo sa inyo, sandaan sa inyo, bibili ng laptop ngayong pasukan o kaya ng cellphone, ng gadget. So ano ba yung purpose nyo sa pagbili? Dapat po, bago po tayo pupunta sa ano, sa SM o sa department store o sa computer shop, alam na po natin ang purpose natin. Uh, sino bang gagamit? Yung mga ganon. So, present tayo susunod. Ha? Check natin to. Yan. Who will be using it? Ano po ba yung gagamit yan? Kinder? Grade 1? Uh, senior, uh, junior high school? Senior high school? Isipin po natin lagi yun. Kasi po, yan po yung mayiging uh, guide natin sa pagbili ng unit. Next. Is, yan. How will it be used? Kung si kinder, kung si elementary lang po yan, kinder to grade 6, hindi po natin kailangan masyado mabigat. Kasi kung si junior high school and senior high school, unless meron silang specific curriculum, uh, minimum natin dito naka-I3 na dapat tayo. Pero kung nasa elementary lang siguro, kahit hindi, huwag nyo na tingnan yung processor, guys. Kasi... Hindi naman talaga natin na may measure doon. Kung minsan napakabilis ng processor mo, kung ang bottleneck lagi, hindi naman yung processor natin eh. Ang bottleneck doon, yung RAM mo, saka yung hard drive mo. Na i-discuss natin sa susunod. <coughs> Excuse me po. So dito, hindi ko na po sinama yung mechanical drive. Napansin nyo po, puro SSD na po ito. Uh, mamaya po may sample ako para po explain doon ng maayos. Ito po yung sinasabi natin 2.5 SATA or SSD na rin ang tawag sa kanya. Actually, lahat po ito is SSD. So, meron dalawang klase po ang SATA natin. We have the 2.5 and the M.2 SATA. So, makapansin po natin si M.2 meron siyang dalawang slot. While si MB and BMA is isa lang po yung slot din niya. So, mga abbreviation lang po yan. So, pwede nyo i-check kay Google kung anong ibig sabihin yan. So, Itong dalawa is almost same lang po yung speed nito. Pag ang um, gusto mo mag-upgrade ng laptop mo, wag ka na pong bibili ng mechanical. Opo, uh, please lang. Uh, kung ang habol mo ay for the system, sige, kailangan SSD na po ang uunin ninyo. Pero kung ang target nyo po ay for storage lang, okay lang po, bumili po kayo ng mechanical. Bakit po din discourage ko na kayong bumili ng mechanical? Ang mechanical po is mabagal na siyang masyado. Compare po sa panahon ngayon, masyado na po siyang mabagal. So, kahit po yung mga teacher ko dito, nag nagtatanong sa akin, dinidiscourage ko na po sila na bumili pa ng mechanical drive. Kasi po, sobrang bagal. Ito yung tipong pagbukas ng laptop mo, is kailangan mo munang magkape bago siya mag-open. Sasabihin nyo, sir, meron namang ano ngayon, mga mechanical na tinatawag nating hybrid na may combination siya ng SSD. Okay lang po yun for backup. Pero for system, ina-advise ko po na wag na tayong gumamit ng mechanical. Uh, ano na lang po tayo, uh, SATA, magsimula po tayo dito sa SSD. Depende po yan. Yung mga luma, uh, for sure yung mga lumang laptop po, so lahat po kayo, pwede po kayo mag-install nito. Sa mga bago po, ito po yun. Uh, M.2 SATA or NBME. So ito po ang pinakamabilis sa kanila lahat. Yung nasa gitna. Opo. Y uh, yan po yung ginagamit ko ngayon dito. Saka po sa mga ICT coordinator namin dito, hindi na po ako gumagamit dito. Ang ginagamit ko po talaga mechanical dito is for backup na lang po. For saving na lang ng mga file. So kaya po highly recommended ko po sa inyo, pag bibili, bibili po tayo ng unit o laptop, ito na po dapat ang target ng storage system natin.
Then, ito po yung pagkakaiba. Ito po yung kanina. Kung napapansin ninyo, ito yung SSD. Ito siya, ito. Then, ito yung NVMe. So, mapansin ninyo, within 25 seconds, nakabot up na si NVMe. Si SSD, wala pa. So, ganun po kabilis yung dalawa. Actually po, mabagal pa ito. Kasi nag-set up po ako ng laptop ko, 10 seconds lang, bumukas na siya. Hindi po ako, nag, hindi po ako nagyayabang, hindi po ako nagbabrag sa inyo. Yun po talaga yung reality. So, ang pakiramdam po kasi, pag hindi pa po tayo naka-experience ng mabilis na device, kumbaga, contento na po tayo. Uh, common po yun. Common ano po yan sa mga sa human nature. Hanggat hindi po natin na-experience, contento na po tayo kung ano pong meron tayo. Ganyan din po ako dati. Contento na po ako sa mechanical. Nung na-experience po ang SSD, tuwan-tuwa po ako dahil ang bilis niya. Pero nung na-experience ko po si NVMe, napansin ko, mabagal pa rin si SSD. Pero common po, uh, pero sa common computing po, sa mga teachers natin, uh, SSD lang po, panalo na po kayo niyan. Mabilis na po yan. Ang, ang, gaga, ang maganda pong gagamit ng mga NVMe, unang-una, kung ikaw pa yung nag edit Kung nag edit ka po ng video, uh, pasok po ito. Uh, pwede po nyo pong gamitin ito. Uh, Photoshop, pwede rin po. Pero sabi ko nga sa inyo, kailangan po ma-experience nyo muna yung mababagal na system bago po kayo pumunta rito. Kasi po, pagbaligtad ang na-experience ninyo, halimbawa, uh, it, na-try nyo muna itong NVMe, then bababa kayo sa SSD. Uh, ano po, malaki pong difference doon. So, Kung baga, maaasar lang po kayo. Pero kung na-try nyo po sa mechanical, na-try nyo si SSD, na-try nyo po si NVMe, yan, palagay ko po, ma-appreciate nyo po ang speed nila sa isa't isa. So, tayo po ngayon, yung mga bago, mga bagong laptop, usually, ito na lang dalawang open nila. Alam ko, nasa next example natin yan. Ito, meron tayong ano dito. Dinalas ko na lang para wala tayong comparison sa loong alisto eh. Meron ako dito ang Acer Aspire 5. Meron naman dito ang HP 14 touchscreen. Pareho po silang Ryzen 3. Ang pagkakaiba lang nila is 4GB ito, dito ay 8GB. Pero pareho silang 128GB SSD. Pero napansin nyo po dito sa HP, naka-indicate siya M.2. Ano pong kulang dito? Sa specs po, dapat po alam nyo. Itong 128GB M.2 SSD, ito po malamang ay SATA lang yan. Pag sinabi pong SATA, parehas na speed lang po yan kaysa SSD. Kung babalikan po natin, ito po yung dinidiscuss ko kanina. Itong SATA at SATA, na iba lang po ang platform yan, kumbaga lumiit lang siya, pero almost same speed lang po siya. So kung check natin dito, 128 dito, 120, ito po ay Possible to, naka-SSD siya. O, kasi hindi naman binanggit ni M.2. Uh, in terms of space, mas masikip ang space nito. Kasi ito, yung alam nyo naman, 2.5, di ba? Malaki pa rin yun. So, malaking space ang kinakain nun. Compare dito. Pero kung i-check ninyo, yung difference nila is medyo, mala medyo malayo ng konti. So, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So, Almost 30, 40, 30, 35, ganon. So, kung kayong tatanungin ko, naka-check in naman, naka-check ako dito sa YouTube natin, saan dyan ang pipiliin yung dalawa? Uh, sige, check natin dito kung meron ako. Kung meron tayong may kita. Yan, sabi ni Sir Lasser Larry, may laptop din po ako na may slot ng M.2 na AMS Mechanical. Okay, very good sir. So, kung ngayon po tatanungin ko, uh, saan dito ang pipiliin nyo? Uh, saan dito ang bibilihin nyo? Ito bang si Acer o si HP? Si Acer ay mas mura. 438 lang. While si HP is 470. At sabi dito, ito ay IPS. Ito ay wala siyang sinasabi. Pero touchscreen daw siya. Ay guys, pagdating sa mga specs, ano lang, focus lang tayo kung ano yung kailangan nating bilhin. 
Ah, uh, focus tayo, so wag tayo magano sa specs talaga. Ah, uh, focus lang tayo kung ano yung target natin kasi pag marami tayong tinitingnan, mas mahihirapan tayong mag-decide. Ah, uh, may sumagot na ba? HP, Acer, sabi nila. HP, HP, Acer. Ano ba ang paggagamitan? Okay, nakasama yan sa question natin kanina, sir. HP, Acer, touchscreen. Okay, Acer, Acer. Okay, ang dami. Para napapansin ko dito sa ano natin, mas marami yung sa mura. Okay. Usually kasi, tayong mga Pinoy, kahit ako aminado ko, mas gusto ko yung makatipid. Pero sa mga nagtatanong sa akin, ang layo kong sinasabi sa kanila is, wag po tayong magtitipid pagdating sa device. Ang check, ang lagi po nating projection diyan, gaano mo siya katagal gagamitin? Sino ang gagamit? Halimbawa, kung ang anak mo ay grade 5 na, bibilihan mo siya ng Acer. Then after 2 to 3 years, mabagal na 'to. Kasi 4 gig lang siya. Bibili ka ng 8 gig RAM. Di ba? Nakita niyo ba 'yung logic, guys? So, kung kaya naman ng pera mo, bakit di ka na lang pumunta rito sa mahal? Pag mag, lagi niyo tatandaan, walang bihira ang mura na maganda. Ang laging maganda, usually mahal. Pero yung mahal na sinasabi natin, masasagot ba yung tatlong question natin? Tatandaan niyo, ang question natin, what is the purpose? Who will be using it? How will it be used? Yan lagi yung tatandaan natin, di ba? So, sige. Sabi dito is, yan, may nagsabi dito, Dell X Alienware. Maganda talaga yung ano, Alienware, guys, kahit ako gusto ko yan. Pero wala sa option natin. May, may nagsabi dito, Acer ako, sir, kasi may nampad. Oo, kasi may nampad nga naman. Ito nga naman wala. Ang bilis ng mata ni sir. Ipon muna. Okay. <coughs> Actually guys, lahat kayo may tama yung sagot nyo. Walang maling sagot. Kasi nga, ang balikan natin, yung pre-guide question na binigay ko sa inyo. What is the purpose? Who will be using it? And how will it, what it, how will it be used? Yun lang naman lagi. Regardless kung anong reason mo, balik ka lagi dito sa question na to. Pag ito na-satisfy mo at na-convince mo yung sarili mo, panalo na po tayo dyan, guys. So, kumbaga, wala nang mag maninisi sa'yo, wala nang magsasabi sa'yo na mali ang binili mo kasi guided na tayo ng question eh. Alam mo kung anong purpose. Alam pa lang, pag kinder lang yung baby natin, bibilihan natin siya ng ano, maganda. Siyempre, imamatch din natin. Kasi yung pera, guys, although yung iba, maraming pera, pero oh, konti lang yung pera ko, so kailangan i-budget natin ng maayos yan. Ganun din yan sa cellphone, guys. Sa mga cellphone, ano bang kailangan mo? Ano bang purpose, no? Gano'n mo katagal gagamitin yon? Kung ang anak natin ay nagpapalit ng cellphone yearly, eh, kailangan yung matibay na bilhin mo. Kasi para hindi sa palit ng palit. Kailangan yung matibay. So, lagi tayong babalik dito sa three guided question natin. What is the purpose? Who will be using it? And how it will be used? So, yun. Diyan yung lagi. Tapos kung ano man ang decision, yan, okay na po tayo dyan. Uh, wala na pong, ano, panalo na po tayo dyan. Basta masunod lang po natin to. Ito po ay aking guide lang. Ito pong aking guide sa pagpili ng mga gadget. So, sinishare ko po sa inyo, kung gagamitin nyo po ito, okay lang. Kung hindi, okay lang po. Pero at least po, meron tayong sariling guide. Pwede po kayong gumawa ng sarili nyong guide na mga gamit ninyo at pwede nyo pong ishare sa mga teachers natin. Wala po tayong problema doon. Ang importante, bago po tayo bibili ng mga gadget natin, lagi po tayo dapat may guided question po. Yun po yung importante. Then, balik tayo. Ayan, mas mataas daw na RAM. Very good sila. Ang daming sumasagot, guys. Nai Actually, naiiwan ako sa sobrang bilis ng comment natin. Tama nga dun, sir. Mas mataas ang RAM. Mas maganda. Okay. Okay, very good ka, sir. Aha. Mas madali po ang maintenance ng A, sir. Okay. Ayan, oh. very good. Ang dami, oh. Buhay na buhay. Kobe, yes. Pero speaking of Kobe, ano, may Kobe din kami. 
Actually, satisfied naman ako kay Kobe ngayon, guys. So, hmm, maubos ng time ko. Balik na tayo. Next. Yan. Blanco. Bakit blanco yan? Dapat, guys, aware tayo. Pagkabili natin doon, tapos na ba? Hindi pa tayo tapos doon, guys. Marami pa tayo. Tandaan nyo, guys, the moment na bumili kayo ng device, nagsisimula ka pa lang. Anong susunod mong gagawin? Be aware. Kaya blanco yan. Bakit yan blanco? Hindi natin alam kung anong mangyari yung susunod. Tingnan mo, anong susunod sa screen ko. Yan. Oh. Boom. Di ba? Hindi natin alam. Ayan na. Sa mga updated sa si inyo, narinig nyo na ba si Joker? Ang pasaway na Joker. Yan. Sabi ni sir, I use 16GB RAM with SSD. Wow. Ang bilis. Okay. Maraming salamat po sa nag-comment, ano? Kung pwede lang, magbabasa ako lagi. O ito, familiar lang ba kayo? Narinig nyo na si Joker kung hindi pa. Please, guys, mag-update po kayo. Ito po ang mga Android apps that you should not install. Uh, ang susunod po ng mga apps ay infected ni, uh, ni Joker. Yan. Ano bang ginagawa ni Joker? So... Ini, ang simple lang naman ang ginagawa niya, ini-steal lang naman yung mga information from cellphone nyo. So kung meron kayong mga na-install na ganito, kung ako pa lang guys, tanggalin nyo na. Actually, 33 lang yan. So hindi ko na babasahin isa-isa. So yan. Uh, kung may kita ninyo, may, pwede nyo namang i-review to. Check nyo po dyan kung meron kayong na-install na apps na galing dyan. Kung meron, please lang, tanggalin nyo na. Then, i-clean up nyo na po yung cellphone ninyo. Dahil po, once na pumasok po yan sa system ninyo, mas maganda mag-reformat na lang tayo or mag-factory reset ang gawin natin para po maayos talaga. So, balikan na lang po yan. So, next tayo. Yan. Ito yung pinakahintay. Siningit ko lang to guys. Actually kasi, as IT o guys, problema o rin. Kung minsan, pag nag-TA ako, Sir, pa, paano ba to? Saan ba ako pupunta sa printer setting? Ano ba yan? So, ang hirap, di ba? Kasi lalo na si Windows 10, ang dami niya talagang shortcut na kailangan. So, ito po. Uh, gumawa ako ng power tools para magamit ninyo. Ayan siya, no? Uh, ayan. So, ide-demo ko yan. Kunin niyo po dito. Uh, ayan. Power click. B1, Bitly. Then, ready for download na po yan. No install po yan. Download nyo lang. I-run nyo na. Okay na po yan. Papakita ko po sa inyo paano siya tumatakbo. So, ito po yan. Ito. So, meron tayong power shell. Uh, kung baka ito po ay one click lang. Pag pinindot ko po yan, automatic lalabas to. Diba? Pag pinindot ko yung command, automatic lalabas po yung command natin. Pag pinindot ko yung run, okay, lalabas yung run. Kung minsan, gusto mo mag... Uh, gusto mo pumunta sa control panel, o click mo lang po yung control panel. Yan. Pag-click mo, automatic po, lalabas yung control panel natin. Halimbawa, gusto mong i-customize ang yung printer. So, hanapin lang po natin yung printer. Uh, ito, device and printer. Then, boom. O, ito na po. Lahat ng printer natin, kita na siya agad. Kung baga, itong ginawa ko is one click lang. Hindi ko na pinahirapan yung mga feature. Gusto mong i-adjust ang sound, click the sound. Yan, di ba? Then, gusto mong mag-check mag yung user account. Okay, walang problema. O yan. Gusto mong mag-add. O sige, manage ka lang. Add another account. Then, ano pa? Gusto mong i-adjust ang yung date, time. Okay, sige, pindutin mo lang yan. Lalabas yung date, time. So, lahat ng... Shortcut na kailangan ni teacher, kailangan ni ICT coordinator, nilagay ko na dito sa power click natin. Ano pa ba? Uh, usually, kailangan ng default program. Ito. Hmm. Then, kung minsan kailangan mong gawing default si Chrome o kaya si Edge, wala namang problema dyan. Gawin mo lang siya, click mo lang yung default apps. Ito. Yan na. Halimbawa, video player, click mo lang yan. Then, ayan, si media, ayan. BLC. Okay na po yan. Yan ang pong default natin. So, napakadali niya. Kasi kung pupuntahan pa natin to, ang dami natin siyang 
Kung wala tayong power click, guys, ang dami nating dadaanan. Ang dami mong ita-type. Actually, pumunta lang ito, pinaka-asar dito eh. Yung, pu yung pupunta ka sa network mo, network connection mo, hindi mo yung makukuha ng one click. Ito, one click lang. Gusto mong i-disable ang internet mo, disable mo. So, walang problema. So, napakabilis lang siya talaga. Oo. Kaya, ito, recommend ko, recommended ko sa inyo kung Kung magustuhan ninyo, pwede nyo po itong i-download dito lang sa link na to. Pa power click, uh, B1 sa Bitly, available na po yan for download. Uh, para po hindi na po mahirapan yung mga teachers natin. Uh, ito po yung pinaka mga shortest way, shortcut sa mga ano common access setting ng Windows 10. Gagana po ito sa Windows, <coughs> Windows 7 hanggang Windows 10. So, yun. Mm -hmm. Ilan time na lang ang natitira? Meron pa akong 2 minutes and 54. 3 minutes na lang po. Sige. Shout out tayo guys. Hindi ko nakakalimutan. May mga nag-request sa akin. Unang-una, shout out ako. The rest 3 minutes ko. Ubutin ko na dito. Shout out ako kay madam ko. Kay bossing Lailani. Sa aming magandang ASDS. Ma'am Minimo. Hello ma'am. Andito na ako. Ang aking mabait na rito. Si ma'am Lee. At si Sir Angelo. Nakasama ko to dati sa RPMS. At ang ating kaibigan na si Sir Marco. Hello Sir Marco. Ito, artist tayo ng dating nito eh. Then ito, ang akin po mga kaibigan sa Region 3 ITOs. Lahat po yan magagaling. Wala po akong masabi sa inyo. Ito po yung last naming outing. Sana maulit ulit. Namimiss ko ng galaan. Sa lahat po ng rito at dito sa buong Pilipinas. Mabuhay po kayo. Magandang araw po sa inyo at siyempre hindi ko makalimutan ang aking mga ICT coordinator sa Olonga po City. Yan, okay na po. So sana po ay may natutunan po kayo. Uh, kahit pa paano ay may naishare po ako sa inyo. So maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Hanggang sa muli po natin pagkikita kung sakaling ma-invite tuloy ako. <laughs> so yes po, uh, thank you very much po. Thank you so much, Sir Arthur M. Aquino. At nakakatuwa dahil magandang reminders na yung nabigay natin sa mga kapagulo, lalo na sa usapin ng gadgets, and of course, technological awareness, sa mga device awareness natin. Tama siya, Sir Carla? Siyempre, ito lang lang lahat tayo gumagamit ng technology in a new way. Kaya dapat alerto at marunong din tayo sa pagkakit ito. Ngayon na, shout out! Shout out din tayo sa ating mga pinapangal ng mga gulo. Guys, kumatiin ang Loret Ang. Mabuga National High School para kay Carmela Regina Lucha. So Kevin Dino ng Region Uyu, Medio M. Lopez, uh, Junior Center of Media Arts, and kay Son Roval ng Senior High School Tonto, at kay Herbert Garcia ng Alexis G. Santos National High School. S.O. Bulacan. Hello din po kay uh, Sir Dolly Polilo, kung natin sa nato ako sa inyo, teacher mula sa Maglalay Santos Memorial National High School. At binabati ko po ang from SDO Camarines Sur. Ayan, alam ba, hindi ko lang nito. Nagadyan na din ako sa karamuan. Hello po sa Lipata Elementary School at sa Lagunoy South District. Hello din sa mga teachers. Lalo na 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 mga teachers. Binabati ko din ang mga teammates na the Botas Men's Volleyball Teachers Team at ang mga kaibigan kong guro na kasama ko din sa badminton, yung badminton team namin. Yes, ito ko sa inyo. And kay Sir Jun Vidalo sa Santa Cruz High School, pangungo ko lokal. Happy viewing po sa inyo, sir. At meron pa tayo. Binabati ko namin ang teaching, non-teaching personal of STO Amina City Region 3. Led by STS Dr. Maria Arlene P. Tamayo at ASTS Dr. Fernandina Ochenko. And sa lahat ng mga teachers ng World Bill 15 with the British School Advisor, Ariel P. Pence. Nice to have you teaching and teaching staff of Prensa National High School. Ano po sa inyo? At yan, para sa ating huling topic ngayong hapon na ito, Teacher Carla, si ba ang ating kasama? Yes, tell us about uh, the reorientation for school property custodian and IT coordinators regarding the debt and computerization program policies and guidelines. Kaya ito ay talagang sa mga 
uh, alabangan, alabang-abang na topic na yung hapon, right? So we have um, uh, uh, an officer from the Asset Management Division who works in Memphis since 2009. So talaga siya sa magaling na magaling na officer na yun. So let's have Ma'am Michelle and C. Michael. Hi, Ma'am Michelle and si Maiko. Pachan po na ang mute box ninyo para po Yes. Oh, nice to ah, okay. Sorry po. Ayan. Good afternoon. Sorry, may jitters. <laughs> First time. So, uh, magandang hapon po. Thank you sa ating mga host sa pag-introduce. Ang, ang ganda ng introduction nyo. Thank you po. Magandang hapon po sa ating mga participants, sa mga teaching and non-teaching personnel po ng ating DepEd, ang ating mga frontliners. Okay po. Sa araw na po ito, ang uh, aking i-discuss po ay yung uh, role ng ating mga supply officers sa delivery ng DCP package po na programa ng DepEd. So, let me share my screen na po. Okay. Okay po. Ayan. So, uh, ayun po, ang DepEd po, ang central office ay nagpa-procure po ng apat na klase ng big ticket items para sa ating mga schools. Ang isa po dito ay ang science and math equipment, textbooks and self-learning modules, school furnitures, at ang didiscuss po natin ngayon yung sa DCP package po. So, uh, yan. ang mga recipient po ng uh, DCP package ay ang mga uh, implementing units which are the uh, elementary schools and the non-implementing uh, Implementing units which are the secondary schools and the non-implementing units which are, which are the elementary schools. So, yan. Ipapakita ko lang po ngayon yung delegation ng authority and responsibility from CO down to schools po. Sa CO, ang, as, ang head po ng Asset Management Division ay ang aming chief na si Ma'am Marites Ablay. Sa region po ay ang regional supply officers. Sa division, ang division supply officers at sa mga schools po ay si school property custodian. Ngayon po, pag may deliveries sa schools ng mga kahit ano pong items or assets, uh, magre-report po si school property custodian kay division supply officer. Si division supply officer po ay mag pwede mag-report kay regional supply officer and kay sa chief po na asset management division sa central office ng mga deliveries na tatatanggap ng schools. So, ano po bang mga topics natin ngayon sa araw na to? Ang role po ni uh, supply officer sa acceptance of delivery, tapos sa uh, transfer po, recording, and issuance ng mga asset sa mga teachers. Yeah, medyo mabagal lang po ang ano. Okay. So, who are the actors and actors, actors and actresses sa ating discussion ngayon? Andiyan po si Division Supply Officer, si Supply Officer, a school property custodian sa mga nanayos, and sa ayos po ay si Supply Officer or school property custodian. Sa sa delivery po, dapat po nandoon din po ang designated Uh, school Inspectorate Team. Ito pong School Inspectorate Team, dinadesignate po ito ni school head. Ang, meron po itong team leader which is a second uh, ranking official, permanent official ng school. Meron din po itong regular member which, is, which has the technical knowledge and adequate skills po sa mga uh, items na dinideliver. In this case po, si ang meron pong knowledge dito is si 
uh, ICT coordinator ng schools. So, meron din pong mga, <coughs> excuse me, provisional members na dinedesignate din si school property custodian para po sa uh, inspectorate team. Pwede pong ito ay isang uh, member ng Parent Teachers Association, isang barangay official, or any third party po na identified ni school property custodian, ay ni school head. So, uh, eto po. Ang, ang specific role po ni school property custodian sa delivery ng DCP ay ang pagpirma niya po sa delivery receipt. Sa pag, bago po siya pumirma ng delivery receipt, titingnan niya po muna kung kompleto yung na-receive niya sa package. I-check niya po yon sa delivery receipt na daladala ni, ng supplier pag nag-deliver sila. Okay. Pipirma po siya dun sa lower right part ng, ano, ng delivery receipt. Okay. After po nito, pag napirmahan niya na yung delivery receipt, itatransmit po ni uh, school property custodian ang original DR and inspection and acceptance report sa school inspectorate team. Sa aking pong pagkakaala, minsan po sa mga schools, um, si school property custodian ay si ITO din po, si school si ICT coordinator. Sa gantong pagkakataon po, pwede pong mag-delegate si uh, school head ng ibang uh, school property custodian para sa DCP. Kasi po, si, si school ICT coordinator, mas kailangan po siya ng inspectorate team dahil po sa kanyang technical knowledge and adequate skills sa pag-inspect ng uh, mga delivered items, lalo na po sa DCP. So, Pero kung meron naman pong ibang uh, maitatalaga si, si school head na marunong din po sa technical doon sa mga ICT equipment na diniliver, pwede pa rin pong magstay as SPC si school ICT coordinator. So, ayan. Pagka po na-check na po nila, upon installation po ng DCP package, pag all working po and um kompleto po yung mga lalo na po yung mga cables yun po yung madalas kasing ma-misplace kasi maliliit siya kumpara doon sa mga monitors and keyboards yan um, pag gumagana naman po siya lahat um and wala pong nag-deviate na item kung ano po yung nakasulat na specifications no item sa inspection and acceptance report dapat po yun din po ang matatanggap ng mga schools so yun po yung dapat na bantayan at i-check maigi ng school inspectorate team, lalo na po ni Aino, school uh, ICT coordinator. So, kung okay na po sa kanya lahat yung delivery na yon, tanggap na, pipirma na po si um, school inspectorate team sa inspection portion ng inspe inspection and acceptance report. Pagkatapos po pumirma ng inspection ni, sa inspection portion ni uh, ni inspectorate team tsaka na po pipirma si school property custodian sa acceptance portion. Yan. Okay. Yan. So, ito pa po ang isa sa mga uh, piniprepare ni pinipirmahan ni supply property school property custodian. Uh, ito pong property transfer report. Ito po ay nanggagaling kasama kasama po to sa mga dala ng supply ng supplier pag nagde-deliver sila tong property transfer report para pirmahan ni uh, school property custodian. So yan, doon po siya pipirma sa lower right corner. Ito po yung nakikita doon sa may arrow. Yan. Dapat din po dito sa property transfer report, naka-indicate pa rin po kung ano yung mga naka-indicate sa IAR. Yun din po yung specs, same specs, same quantity, same amount po. Okay. So, why do we need PTRs? Ito pong PTR ay nagtitrigger ng booking up from CO, book of accounts to the division. Pag, pagka po non-ayos, yung po mga elementary school kasi wala silang sariling 
book of accounts nila, nakabook po ito sa division offices. Pagka naman po ayos, dahil may sarili silang book of accounts, diretso po ito sa kanilang book of accounts. So, ito rin pong PTR ang nagtitrigger ng preparation ng journal entry voucher from DepEd CO to DepEd DO and or IUS. Ano po ba yung booking up? Ang booking up po yung pag uh, yung pong pag-recognize po ng as ng item na yon na deliver as DepEd asset siya. So para po Mailipat naman po yung um, uh, ang pagka wait, yung um, booking booking up sa DO kasi nasa kanila na po yung asset or sa IU yun na po yung pagpe-prepare ng journal entry voucher. Ito pong pag pag-prepare ng journal entry voucher ng accounting ng central office. Natitrigger po ito pagka nakabalik na sa amin yung signed PTRs. So, ibig sabihin, um, in-acknowledge na ni, uh, ni school property custodian or ni DO na nareceive na nila, nasa kanila na talaga item and pina, pwede nang i-book up sa kanila. Okay po. The keyword po ang lagi po nito ay transfer kasi nata-transfer accountability ng mga procured items. So, ang... Ito pa po sa sa role ni uh, ni supply ay school property custodian ay ang pagre-record. Ang ay ang mga property and plant equipment po dito po nabibilang yung mga DCP packages kasi above 15,000 po yung amount niya. So, ang ginagamit po natin pag above 15,000 ang amount is school property card. Pagka naman po below 15,000 ang amount ng item sa ano lang po to, sa stock cards. Okay. Yan. Pagka naman po okay na na i-record na ni supply na school property custodian ang uh, asset sa kanyang property card, ready na po ito para i-issue sa teacher in charge. So, magpe-prepare po ngayon si school property custodian ng property acknowledgement receipt. Ito naman po, pag ay uh, pipirmahan ni teacher in charge kung sino po yung magiging user nung, uh, uh, nung DCP para po siya po yung magiging uh, accountable doon sa ano sa DCP package na yon. Siya po yung mag-monitor ng mga kung ano yung mga kailangan repair or may kung may nagkulang or uh, may nasira, siya po yung magmo-monitor nun and ire-report niya po sa ITO and sa supply officer. Para po, kung under warranty pa siya, pwede po siyang uh, i-report sa supplier para mapalitan or mapagawa. Okay. Ang ang Uh, school property custodian din po ay mga nagpe-prepare ng mga reports. Yan. Pagka po, ano, pagka nakareceive na siya ng mga DCP, i-update niya po yung inventory report niya kasi ito po ay sinasubmit ng uh, mga SPC sa kanilang uh, division supply officers para po sa monitoring and recording din po. Okay. Ngayon po, si... Uh, si SPC ayan po pina-provide na po si kapag may delivery po ng mga uh, DCP ipo-provide niya po ang copy ng DR, IAR and PTR sa Division Supply Officer for recording and monitoring purposes. Okay, so what is our common denominator? Ang common denominator po ng mga Division Supply Officer, so school property custodians and uh, SO po ng mga IUs ay ang acceptance of delivery, <coughs> excuse me po, recording of delivery, issuance of delivery, and preparation and submission of reports. Ito pong reports na ginagawa ni uh, SPC and ni DSO, ito po yung um, RPCI or yung Report on the Act 
on the physical count of inventory. Ito po ay pinapasa semi-annually semi sa mga COA ng division, division office po. Ang, ang RPC ay po ay for items below 15,000 ang amount. Isa pa po sa ginagawa yung RPC PPE or the report on the physical count of property plant and equipment, ito po naman ay annual na sinasubmit sa COA. Yan po. Wait lang po. Ay. Okay. Yan. Basically po, ang role po ni um, school property custodian ng mga elementary schools or yung mga nanayos, wala, wala silang sariling book of accounts is the same with the role of the school property custodian in the secondary schools or yung mga may sariling book of accounts or what we call um, implementing units. So, um, yan. Dito na po ako nagtatapos. Um, Salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. Sana po ay may naibahagi akong sa inyo na um, konting kaalaman po, pahapyaw na kaalaman po sa um, role ni supply, uh, school property custodian sa mga deliveries po. Back to you po, host, Sir Avangel. Okay. Ay, pwede pa po ako mag-shout out. <laughs> Marami pa po akong time. Ay, yes ma'am! Sige po, mag-shout out po tayo. Go lang po! Gusto ko lang po mag-shout out sa aking boss, sa mga bosses ko sa office namin, kay, kay Ma'am Tess Ablay and kay, kay Sir Albert, sa aking mga office mates, kay Ate She. And gusto ko lang po um, i-shout out si Bebe. Hi, Bebe. Nanonood siya. And, um, para po sa uh, in behalf of our buong office po namin, gusto namin po i-congratulate ang aming uh, isa sa mga kasamahan namin na ikakasal sa Saturday. So, congrats kay Carlo and kay Grace. Salamat po. Kay JJ din. <laughs> Yes, maraming maraming salamat din na Michelle for that relevant discussion and for reorienting us about the DepEd computerization program. So, ang dami natin na tulad doon, di ba, sir? Tama ka dyan, teacher Carla. At alam mo, mula umaga hanggang hapon, busog na busog tayo at punong-puno tayo ng kaalaman. We learned about the radio-based instruction, TV-based instruction, at na-orient din tayo about the DepEd computerization program. At yung mga ibang innovations like the Adobe, Part, right? Adobe ka ba? Adobe ka ba? Adobe ka ba? <laughs> and we are just, this is just our second day at marami pa po tayong pag-uusapan simula bukas na Brown Friday. Three days pa yan, mga teacher. So marami pa kayong dapat na kaman. At huwag pong pakalimutan that our, gamitin po natin ang hashtag Vincent2, day 2. Okay. Yes, yes. Let's just remind our dear teachers that what did you learn? What did you accomplish? Your, your. Ating evaluation. Your evaluation until January 31, 2020. Totoo po yung dear teachers. Muli po ako sinasabi ko namin. Kung hindi man po ito araw na matapos po ninyo, makompleto po ninyo ang ating course, wag po kayo magilalat dahil maari po po balik na dito sa LMS course na matatag po ang lamang sa LMS of course. At hanggang January 31, 2022 po ito. And dear teachers, no? Siguro marami niyong tatanong. Sir, bakit kami ikot-ikot lang, ikot-ikot lang? Or hindi kaya, sir, nandun lang kami lagi kay I am robot. Opo, mga kinabahal ng guro. Dahil medyo traffic na po kayo kay Angel. Kaya po, tayo ay humingi ng pasensya, humingi tayo ng, uh, ng patience din. Para hintayin po natin. Kung hindi man po kayo ngayon, kami ang gabi, baka baka gising po kayo ng konti. Or, kung hindi man this week, pwede pa po. Sa mga susunod na araw, hanggang January 31, 2022. Yes. No? Sabi mo kanina, Tisha Carla? No? Fresh work. Yes, that's it. At dito sa business, di ba? Hihintayin ka. Dito lang yan. 
sa bitset 2.0. At ano naman kaya ang mga pag-uusapan natin bukas, Teacher Carlo? We have topics in store for everyone. Pero bago yan, no? makakasama niyo bukas ang ating mga teacher broadcasters na si Sir Michael at si Ma'am Mary Ann Abdiha. Sir, may ang kayong reminder for the for about mail merge material? Tama-tama. For tomorrow, dear teachers, no, we have uh, a link that will be posted down here. Ito lang po. Ayan. Ito lang po yung lahat. Okay. So, pakidownload lang din po muna yan para po kayo ay ma-ready sa tinatawag nating uh, activity about mail merge materials. At ang speaker namin dyan, nakapagwa po, tama ba? Tama kayo lang. So, abangan nyo na, abangan ko yan. And dear teachers, meron po kami bilang maghanda para sa ating pag-usapan bukas. Let's watch this video. Hello! Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Ako si Grace, isa sa mga program manager sa sumusuporta sa Microsoft Philippines. We hope you're enjoying the session on Minecraft Education Edition. Minecraft is actually one of the tools that the Department of Education is currently rolling out to enhance the teaching and learning experience in the classroom. In the next few slides, I will share to you on how to activate, download, and use Minecraft Education Edition on your devices. Narito naman ang checklist sa mga kailangan nating i-prepare before using Minecraft Education Edition. Ang Minecraft Education Edition ay available sa following devices. Windows 10, either desktop or laptop. Mac devices, iPads, at Chromebooks. When we access Minecraft Education Edition, we must ensure that we have a stable internet connection because you would need to connect to the internet whenever we log in and access the application. At ang pinaka-importante, kailangan meron tayong active na Office 365 account na ipinagkaloob sa atin ng Department of Education. For example, isa ako mag-aaral mula R11. Ang format ng aking Office 365 account ay juan.delacruz at r11.deped.gov.ph. Kung sakasakaling wala pa kayong Office 365 account at kayo ay isang guro, maaari po kayong magtanong sa inyong Division IT Officer. At kung kayo naman ay isang estudyante, maaari kayo magtanong sa inyong advisor or school ICT coordinator. Tandaan, ang inyong Office 365 account ay ang nagsisilbing lisensya nyo para magamit ang Minecraft Education Edition. So ensure na wag na wag nyo kakalimutan yung passwords nyo and keep your accounts active. Okay, so quick tutorial on how to install Minecraft Education Edition kapag kayo ay gumagamit ng desktop or laptop. So all you need to do is go to the website education.minecraft.net slash get dash started slash download or itong naka-flash sa ating screen. At doon ay makikita niyo yung options for you to download. Kung kayo ay gumagamit ng desktop or laptop, make sure na ang pipiliin nyo ay yung Windows at click the download button. Pag napindot nyo na ang download, may lalabas na prompt sa inyong desktop asking you if you would want to install Minecraft Education Edition. Just click on the button install and automatically magsisimula na ang installation ng Minecraft Education Edition sa inyong mga devices. Kapag natapos ang installation ng Minecraft Education Edition sa inyong devices, ay may lalabas na pop-up wherein kinakailangan nyo mag-sign in gamit ang inyong DepEd Office 365 accounts. Kapag successful ang inyong sign-in, ay automatic namang lalabas ang start screen ng Minecraft Education Edition at pwede nyo na itong gamitin. Para naman sa mga gumagamit ng iPad, narito ang paraan kung paano ito i-download sa inyong iPad devices. Hanapin lamang ang Apple App Store. Sa Apple App Store, i-click ang search at hanapin ang Minecraft Education Edition. I-click ang install. Pag na-install na ang Minecraft Education Edition sa inyong iPad, mag-login lamang gamit ang inyong DepEd Office 365 account. At ngayon, pwede nyo nang gamitin ang Minecraft Education Edition. We encourage you to download the app, try it, explore, mag-download kayo ng worlds at i-practice natin kung paano nga ba maglaro ng Minecraft Education Edition. Hopefully, magamit natin ito sa ating pagtuturo at pag-aaral. To know more about Minecraft Education Edition, you may check out the website education.minecraft.net. We are looking forward to see more DepEd Minecrafters. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat! And that's it, Teacher Carla, no? So bukas, nakakatawa na we will be using Minecraft for 
education. And here's the pangalaw, at the same time, we'll let our learners okay, enjoy at the same time as we discover the technology, right? So, Teacher Carla, for everyone, what's in store for you? Bukas po ay pag-uusapan natin ay mga bagay related to Microsoft. Uh, sir. Microsoft ba? Ay, Microsoft ba? Ay, ano ba? Bakit? Kasi, nasa'y lang na. Nasa'y lang na. Ay, ano ba? Happy, happy, good vibes lang. Nandaan, 160 days na lang bago ang Pasko. At, mami ang gabi. Abangan natin, baka pumanda na si Jose Marichan. Teacher Karen, hindi pwede ko malis lang, hindi ka rin sa sample sa kanila. Okay? So, para po sa bawat isa, ito, ang maagaw pa mas ko, ang doon sa inyo ni Teacher Karen. Never a single day. Wait, di ba Teacher Karen? Ito pa? Nandun na yun. Sige, sige. May box ako.